shows up right here. Okay, guys. Hello, hello. We are trying our best uh, the second time around. I don't know. We got jinxed or something. Uh, last night we had to make, we were trying to make a bunch of changes to bring on Night Shame uh, when we were on trying to get his uh, him to be heard, and I'm afraid that might have caused something. I'm not sure, but it's the only thing I can see. But it's weird. They could hear us at first, and then they cut out, I guess, because they could hear us talking in the beginning. I yeah, think. I think so. Uh, they would, you know, you they would have done earlier. something earlier, I would assume. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, just a second, guys. I'm just trying to. Okay, uh, see you here now. Thank you so much for coming in here. Yep. Or, uh, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Back in full stereo. Yay! That's rolling. Thank you go. so much for uh, patience and for understanding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do we don't apologize. know what's going on. We're going to figure it out later. So right now, yeah. we're welcome back to our show. We are here. And uh, do you want to change spaces? Because you're not going to like No, no, it's okay. It's or... okay. It's okay. Uh, we got to send them a link, but we got to bring them on. The poor guy, it's like 1.30 in the morning, his time. I feel so bad for him. Uh, yeah, I'm just sending it in Twitter. There, okay, now I'm going to come in. Second. And, uh, well, you welcome our guest, and uh, we'll have to... I retweet our new uh, link. And our guest is Ian. <coughs> hello, hello. Hi, guys. Hello. I can hear you. Our Everything started? Well, yeah, I think what happened was last night we had our guest Night Shame on, and he can't connect with Hangouts, and we were trying to work with to get him to be heard. And we were playing with all the internals and everything else that turned into a nightmare, and I think maybe... But you guys could hear us at the beginning, right? Started off good, but then something just cut out, so... Um, I don't know what it could be. Yeah, no, me neither, because we're using the same mic. We just plugged in Xenia, so it's definitely something on my end of my laptop. Yeah. Well, we'll figure it out after. The main thing is uh, that we can hear you well. It looks like they yes. can hear both, uh, all, all three of us. Well. Uh, so we're happy to be back, and it's just cool. a little hiccup. Sorry about that once again. <laughs> That's okay. I'd like to thank all my people in the chat that have turned up to uh, to see me and see well. this show. Yes, thank you so much. Yes. I've seen lots of new faces. Really welcome, welcome. That. And for those of our people that are in the chat, welcome our new people, <laughs> uh, the fans and followers of Hazy Days. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. And you too, thank you so much for jumping in. No problem. <laughs> One of your followers, uh, the cult leader, Hazy Days. There you oh, go. That, that's Mr. You Daisy. <laughs> You even have to tell you who it was. You knew right away. <laughs> yeah, he, he's one of my best mates. He's just uh, heckling. Well, listen, I got to say not only thank you for your patience with this while we got it sorted out, but thank you so much for today for the last minute uh, request to come on with us. We really do appreciate it. Ah, that's all right. Don't mind. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of exposure for me as well, you know. Oh, well, that's it. That's like we say, it's always a win-win for everybody, hopefully. so. And you deserve all of it, I must say, because I have been listening to your music and, and also your amazing, how do you call it, handiwork? Handiwork, yeah. <laughs> uh, because I have noticed you're, you're doing uh, the, the, the box, uh, oh, the Matchbox the guitar. The box guitar. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I have never heard of anything like that before. Uh, and, yep. uh, when you just started. Uh, it's actually you... the second one I've built. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. That's I built one a couple of months back, and uh, the reason I'm building this one is because I'm going to raffle it off that is to so my subscribers. Cool. Um, it, it started off because you, Dizzy, started a GoFundMe page, uh, of, a, a GoFundMe um, thing, because I had my bike stole off me by the police, motorbike, yes. uh, which was a bit unfortunate, uh, and they didn't like the sound of it, so they thought they'd raise the money for me to buy a new bike. That is so That's cool. That's so uh, amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. And I mean, the generosity of, of my subscribers and, and you, Dizzy subscribers and everyone, 
uh, was overwhelming. So I, I couldn't just sit back and expect people just to give me money for nothing. So what I decided to do was build a cigar box guitar and everyone that donated to the cause would get a raffle ticket and I'll raffle it off to one of them. That is so you know? cool. Doesn't that speak to the power of the like the internet and YouTube and community and everything? I think I believe well. I've never known nothing like it in my life. Seriously, a lot of people say that. You know, a lot of people we've been trying to say that. You know, YouTube has really opened them up to a new wave of people. Yeah, people to follow interest in what they do, but like, actually, it's the heart and soul of people that really are like dedicated to you and care about you and stuff like that. Yeah, well, I've been I've been posting on YouTube for about eleven years now. Uh, but for, to be honest, for the first 10 years, I just used to post a video and I wouldn't even look at it again, you know? Right. Um, I didn't check um, views or stats or subscribers or anything. I would just post, upload a video and just leave it sitting there. So I didn't really get involved in any sort of community or anything, you know? Mm. Um, and then about a year ago, I decided to monetize my account um, and start making a bit more of an effort on my videos. I bought a lot of equipment, so my production uh quality would go up you know and uh yeah in the last few months my, my channel seems to be taking off and uh i mean there's people loving my songs now and i you know i've been writing them for years but all of a sudden um you know the, the attention i'm getting from my music is unbelievable it's uh i mean your music is worth being heard my friend like you know it's it's almost a crime you know you didn't have more over the first 10 years i'm glad you're finally getting some of the recognition i truly believe you deserve yeah well i i, I appreciate that uh yeah a lot of people are, a lot of people are really enjoying my music um and my music's i don't even know how to categorize it i think i've got my own sort of style i don't know when when people ask me what sort of style music do i write i can't really answer them you know oh how would you describe it if yes. you can describe it in a couple sentences then if you can just like you know um, uh, name I, it i've tried i've tried describing it many times um it's just i just feel it's music from the heart you know i just i just write i just write how i feel um i write i normally write my best songs when i'm at my lowest point mm -hmm. you know uh, music have helped me through life um in some really down situations so Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's why people appreciate it because they, they can feel that it's real you know well you think of the greatest songwriters that ever lived even the greatest guitar players and stuff i mean they're all tortured souls and the more tortured the more the better the songwriter there yeah were. and i i am definitely one of them oh. well <laughs> it's good that i'm glad you found an outlet for it <laughs> yeah well i mean to be honest i think music have saved me over the years you know right okay well that's going to lead me into my next question i ask everybody here and it's, we're not Dr. Phil. We don't make people cry. So we always say it's an open-ended question. Not to yeah, try pretty hard to make me cry. <laughs> but we were just wondering if you could go back a bit and tell us a bit about yourself, like where you feel like starting. It could be from being a toddler all the way up to being a teenager or high, whatever you feel like starting from, just to give everybody a little bit of background about you. Um, well, I was born in 1976, which makes me 41. <laughs> um, I come from quite a big family, five brothers and sisters. Um, I'm the oldest, so I had quite a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. Um, we lived on a council estate. We never had any money, you know. I don't come from a rich background or anything. Um, my dad passed away when I was 26, which was quite a massive uh, blow for the family. Right. And being the oldest, I, I took a lot of responsibility on myself, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then I started my own family then when I was a year later, when I was 28, I had my first child. Oh. And uh, that sort of helped me helped me along, you know, start my own family and uh, having responsibilities. But up until that point, I was always out drinking. I thought I, I, I literally thought I was a rock star, you know. Yeah. I was up to all sorts, you know, taking drugs and all sorts of shit, you know. But look, looking back now, um, it was sort of like self medication, you know. But all, all the all the shit I went through as, as a kid, one hundred percent. I mean, it's it's one thing to go when you're not having a drink, and I'm the same way. I was the same way myself. And there is a point where you cross where it's not just going out for a drink with the guys, or it's not just a little bit of here and there on the weekend. It, yeah, yeah, it is self medicating for sure. Yeah, and to be honest, looking back now, because I've I've given all that up. You know, I've even given up smoking. The only thing I do now is. I have, I have a drink, you know, 
Yeah. And I'm not even a lot. I don't even drink a lot. It's just, um, you know, just just have a can of beer or two um, in the night. Right. Um, but when I look back now, it was it was almost as if I was trying to kill myself. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, but you don't you don't actually realize at the time. Not until you look back when you've stopped it all. It's it's like I was on the road to self destruct. You know. When you're in, when you're in that scenario, you have no perspective. That's why only once you get out, you get to look back. Because we're around the same age, you and I. And yeah. it's true. Like when you're in the fog, you can't see anything. It's only once yeah, you yeah. Get down again. And, and I don't think you realize at the time that you, you you're on a road to self destruct. It's just you you really just don't care, you know. And, uh, and I spent I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, but luckily, I, I got through it. You know, not not everyone do. That's right, and that is a big. You no, know, I, I know a lot of friends and family members that died um, from drugs. I mean, I never took anything like heroin or anything, but it, mine was like cocaine and 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 shit like that, like you know. Right. But um, a lot of a lot of friends and family I know died from drugs, and a lot of also committed suicide. Mm -hmm. You know. No. Oh. I just feel blessed that I've come through the other end, and I've got a beautiful family to to keep me going. You know. Now, was it when you met your uh, today wife that you started changing things, or was it before you met her, or was? No, no, I met her. We were we were young. I was twenty one when I met her, so she she put up with a lot of shit oh. um, over the years for me. You know, she's still there she's still you know she's still there. Twenty years we've been together. Congratulations! Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, we got two, we got two sons. One's thirteen, and we got a one year old. Oh. I didn't realize yeah, that was an age gap. Amazing. It was a bit of a surprise, to be honest, because uh, I heard you saying you got a chronic illness. Yes. Uh, um, well, so sort of my partner, she, she hasn't been well for a long time, so I'm pretty much a full-time carer for her. And uh, really? we were waiting for two years for an MRI scan. Okay. Uh, to, to try and figure out what was wrong with her. And when we went in for the MRI scan, uh, they had to stop it halfway through because she was five and a half months pregnant. Wow. wow. And, we, and we didn't know. That's an interesting way to find out. Yeah, it was. And then eight eight weeks from that day, the baby was born. He was born premature. Oh wow! So, so you that, had such a fast uh, time yeah. to yeah. choosing. Yeah, you. eight wow. literally eight weeks. Eight weeks to the day. It was unbelievable. That is. So that's that's taking a bit again. Used to again, you know. Of course. So my life has been uh, pretty um, traumatic all the way through. <laughs> Oh, wow. I I bet I bet it's something unexpected, but then such a small time because. But uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's one and a half now. I mean, we wouldn't change him for the world. But I didn't expect a turn forty and have another baby. You know. Yeah. That's so amazing. That's uh, that's amazing. A miracle baby. Yeah. Uh, but to your wife, you said about the MRI is uh, is she? Yeah, okay? My wife's actually in the chat, Kate James. Oh. Oh, hello, hello. Kate. If, if she wants to come on with you, it's up to her. If she'd like to, she's. No, more she's laid in bed. She hasn't been too good. She's not very oh. well. <laughs> well then, a special hi to you, Kate, and I hope yeah. you're feeling better. Yeah, we both hope you're feeling better. It's actually it's actually twenty to two in the morning, yeah. So yeah, <laughs> yes, it's quite uh, late for you. We appreciate you. That's what was so good about you like doing that. that. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, I thought about it. I thought, why not? I mean, let's just do it. You know, <laughs> life's too short to say no at the moment. A couple that we've gotten last minute for some reason tended to be from the UK, which is always a hard time zone for you guys to for yeah, our yeah. show. So. Uh, I, that's why it really meant a lot for you to say yes. We really do appreciate it once again. Yeah, that's no problem. So um, the box guitar, I, I, I was watching that today. Like that's, uh, I love the craftsmanship going on in that. I think that is so cool. Yeah, I mean, when I do something, I try and do it to the highest standard possible. You know. Well, I'd say mission accomplished. Uh, because I watch some videos of people making them, and they literally just stick a stick through a box and stick a string on it. You know. Yeah. But, I mean, I've can I've just, it's all, I'll show you, it's, it's all taken apart because I've just um, put an oil on it. But I've literally carved, carved it all by hand, you know? It's, it's, it's like, it's unique, it's a unique piece. That's unbelievable. And, uh, I've marked all the frets and then the other end. Wow. That is a lot of work, my friend. You know? That is crazy. That is really a lot of work. In a but, um. When the box is on that, it's even it's even going to be electric. I've, I've wired it all up. Somebody's going to be very lucky. That is so cool. Let me, let me just show you what it looks like when it's on together. Yeah. 
yeah, guys, it is beautiful. Amazing. Let me just put this on just a second. And that, that'll go on there. Oh, so cool. Yeah. What? Like, a, like a little resonator? Like, what is it? Like, a, it looks almost like a drain. You know the thing you put in the plug in the sink? Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Cost, so, cost 50 pence. That little piece cost 50 pence. Oh, that's brilliant. So but, smart. Um, the volume control is off a Budweiser bottle. The beer cap. A bottle. Oh, oh, my goodness. So, cool. so smart. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. How many mm -hmm. hours do you think like it takes all together to make something like that yeah. awesome? Sorry? How many hours do you think approximately it takes to um, Well, to be honest, I think I'm about 15 or 16 hours in at the moment. That's a lot wow, of work. that's a lot of work. Yeah, I've, I've, done, I've done a whole build live uh, on my channel. Yes, that's amazing too because uh, you you only do them on lives, right? When you build, you do live well, streams. Well, this, the reason I'm doing this one on live is because somebody's going to win it, and I think it just be it's a nice idea for whoever wins it can go back and look at exactly how it was built. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. I was watching every step of the way, you know. I was thinking this not only that it helps my channel um and it helps me get watch time you know that's i'm not going to beat on the bush that's that's you know we're all trying to grow our channels and uh that's that's what i'm doing this was the first one i built hey, look at the job wow, on that looks so slick so amazing yeah. so i mean the head's a bit different on this one you know each one i'm going to make is going to be unique you know yeah exactly well I but mean, all this is carved by hand no That's machine tools, all just files. It's even got a heel on it. Holy God almighty. You could find work as a luthier later on as a guitar builder. Guitar builder. Yeah, it's funny because I've been looking into... Um, I didn't even know the word luthier, what the word luthier meant until about three or four months ago. Um, and I was looking into gu guitar building. And then my uncle posted something on Facebook asking if somebody had um, an old acoustic guitar because he wanted some bits off it. Uh, and I had some old bits off an old acoustic guitar, so I said he could have them. Um, and he said he was making a, a cigar box guitar. Uh, and then I didn't think more of it. And then the next day I started thinking uh, and looking into them, and I thought, I wouldn't mind making one of them myself, you know? So cool. Then I had to go and buy all the bits that I just give to my uncle. <laughs> That's so amazing. You got that real good attitude through everything. I like that. I like the way you're talking. Like when you're talking that, you can hear that positivity. You're always making something out of anything. I love that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, you've got to have new, you know? No, well, not everybody does, so that's another yeah. pat in the back well, for you. I, I, I much prefer to make something myself than, than go and buy it. Oh? Well, yeah, you know? Good. I've always been pretty good with my hands. Well, where you are right now, is that like your shop? This is my attic. I've, I've made this myself. Well, that's your attic? Yeah. Wow. It's my It's my man cave. I mean, oh. it's a bit of a mess at the moment because I'm... I'm uh, this is all my guitars and stuff. It's my green screen over there is where I keep my drone and, and I do some electrical stuff. So cool. My, got my computer and my monitors and everything here in front of me. I love it. You know, it's like all my mixing desk and stuff. Um, yeah, but it's 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 basically I just cladded. Um, if you have a look, the best the best way you could look at it is if you go on my Twitter account. Um, there's a there's a picture, a wide angle picture. Okay. Um, actually, if I if I go on there now. Yeah. See, I'm not used to this tonight because I was uh, I'm usually the one that's got the computer in front of me, so I feel weird tonight. I'm just standing here. I don't even know what to do with my hands yeah, or well, my eyes. Cause that's exactly. okay. Yeah, I'll do it because I'm uh, I I do a Sunday show myself, so I know what it's like to do a show. That well, that's great. Jump right in. Then. I appreciate it because I feel like such a duck out of water tonight. Yeah, no, that's cool. On your Twitter as a as a picture. I'll show you now, then I'll share my screen. Okay, perfect. And then then you can see. Um... Thank you. That's okay. Just trying to get onto. If I share my screen, can you see that? I know that's so cool. Yeah. So I've basically I, I couldn't take any of the struts out, you know? Yeah, yeah, but you're still it's, just, it's just a rented property. I don't own it. So I've I just basically made the best out of the space. You know? That's I, I love it. 
<laughs> I know it's a man cave, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like it's like a it's like a, my own little pod, like you know. Well, yeah, no, you used every bit of space well, like that. I like the way you worked in the different kind of like stations all around. Yeah, I basically, I've got four stations. Well, five if you include my green screen. So cool. Um, yeah, I've utilized the space to to its maximum potential. I think you know. Have you been at that place for a long time where you are now? Uh, we were the first people to live here. We've been here almost 10 years. Oh, cool. Yeah, but I've only had this uh, I've only had this man cave for about five years, I think. Mm. Um, yeah, about five years. And we're probably going to have to move soon because we need a, it's only a two-bedroom house and we need a three-bedroom now. So mm. I'm going to lose my man cave, which is... Well, hopefully yeah, you'll find something that you'll be able to use as well. Yeah, so. and somebody's yeah, yeah. lucky whoever moves in afterwards. <laughs> yeah. uh, people in the chat are really excited about that. Uh, thumbs up for a man cave. That's amazing. Yeah. An awesome getaway. I think everybody's really jealous. Uh, having yeah, I mean, it, I mean, this is uh, this is basically this is my YouTube headquarters. You know. Yeah, that's this amazing. Is where, this is where everything goes on. Goes on everything I put on my channel, unless I'm out outdoors so sometimes i do outdoor live shows uh if i'm somewhere interesting you know i'll go live and show my subscribers um but apart from that 90 percent of my youtube content uh is created in you that's amazing amazing uh yes. well so you are handy not only guitar making and making your own own man cave uh, what else do you make is there something that you have been doing before um well, I I just do what what's needed, really. You know, I mean, I'm I'm a carpet fitter by trade. That that's my trade. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Okay, okay. You need me to, I'm not cabinet, but I figured something to do with uh, carpentry. carpentry. Yeah, that answers. No, not carpentry. Carpet. Oh, carpet. Carpet. Oh, carpet okay. fitter, yeah. For oh. carpet, but uh, but I've always wanted to uh, be a carpenter. Okay. It's a funny story, actually. The reason I'm a carpet fitter is because when I was younger, I was pretty shy. And when I left school, I went on a thing called a YTS course. It's basically um, when you leave school with not very many qualifications, they put you on a, like a government course. Right. And they sent me to this place. And when they asked me what I wanted to be, I did actually say carpenter. But I must have mumbled. And the guy wrote down carpet fitter. And no. I was... See, this is this is a true story, uh, and I was so shy to to correct him, I just went on a carpet fitting course. Oh my god, amazing! And I become a carpet fitter, and that's the truth. Serious? That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, because when when I was younger, I had pretty low self esteem because of like my childhood and then a lot of oh. shit that happened. Um, it took me a while to get where I am today. You know. Um, yeah. So so it, it was. It was just me mumbling my words. Um, they, they wrote down the wrong thing, and, and I just went with it. I just felt it was easier to go with it than, than make a fool of myself, you know? So That's afterwards, amazing. when you got uh, in it, uh, have you ever thought about, well, I wish, uh, you know, I, I have been a carpenter, or were you like, it was a destiny, so to say? It, it worked out um, the best. Well, to be honest, I sort of class myself a bit as a carpenter because I – I can pretty much do a lot of stuff with wood um, and I haven't, you know, been trained, you know, I, I'm self-taught. Right. You I can pretty much do, I can pretty much put my hand to whatever I'm interested in, you know. Well, you got to show the box. Anybody who doesn't believe that, you just show them your box guitar right away. You proved it right there. I mean, yeah, Lowell's, Lowell's girl said the, that Kate has to give you work at home, then you'll be a carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good girl, Lowell's girl. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a lot of people. A lot of people have come over from my channel today, and I do appreciate it. A lot of them have stayed up as well to to. Uh, oh, to that's us too. Thank you guys so you much. Tad, you Dizzy, Natasha. Natasha's actually my sister. Oh, welcome, Natasha. I like drubbing wood. <laughs> she wrote... uh, <laughs> what you saying? Like mine. <laughs> Is that you, Dizzy? No, that was your sister, Natasha. Wrote that. <laughs> What did she write? He likes rubbing wood. <laughs> yeah, the reason she said that was because when I made my first uh, cigar box guitar, uh, when I when I was carving the neck, uh, I made a video of it and I, I titled it "Grabbing My Neck and Rubbing My Wood." Oh, 
hug. <laughs> clickbait. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's clickbait, but it's true. Yeah, yeah, you weren't lying. Click, you know? what clickbait is there's truth into it. That's what. Really yeah, because I, I don't, I know, I don't really like clickbait to be honest, because um, it's you know it's deceiving. But I thought that was pretty clever, and it was true. But you know, over time, that's something that's been debated a lot. It's coming to the realization that there's two different kinds of clickbait, and that's like they call it like good and bad. It's like good and bad cholesterol. And more and more people are realizing they have to start doing more clickbait, the good type, though. Not yeah, saying, yeah. you know, not using the icon of a girl laying across a Ferrari and then well, I think, I think the good on. type of clickbait is intelligent thinking, you know? Yeah. It's, 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 it's wording it right um, for what you're actually about to show somebody. But that's what you did. You see, that's what I mean in that one. That was really good. That will pique somebody's curiosity and they're like, oh, yeah, this yeah. is going to catch you, you know? And they'll go in. Yeah. Smart. It's, uh, I mean, if I was a woman, I would have a bikini on on all of my thumbnails. <laughs> you know? How <laughs> <laughs> oh, to build a cigar box guitar naked. <laughs> That's like that girl we're always talking with, uh, with uh, bottle caps here about, that Piper Bush. She's actually a Canadian girl, and she's grown in, on YouTube like 450,000. And, I mean, she gets on, and she's like, how to make, like, use a baguette, and she's cutting a hole in the sausage or – how to jump rope with and without a bra, what's the difference? And it's like, yeah, yeah. And she's getting like unbelievable follows from this stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, there you go. She's just using her assets, you know? That's right. That's right. And she's putting her assets to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I can't fault her for that. No, exactly. Because, like there's you said, a of, there's a lot, a lot of worse she could be doing. Yeah, that's right. You know? I, I agree. <laughs> I you like know, there's, 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 there's literally millions of people watching YouTube videos every single day. And, and, you know, there's something to please everybody. This is not a place for wallflowers. You've got to try and make yourself stand out here. Whether you like, I mean, you don't want to sell your soul to the devil, but you have to make yourself seen. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've noticed that in the last year. Um, I consciously made a decision to, to grow my channel, um, and, and it's been working ever since I made that decision. Uh, I bought myself a lot of decent equipment as well because I gave up smoking um, almost two years ago. Excellent. Congratulations. After the first year of giving up, I saved enough money to buy myself a nice computer, a nice camera, some, you know, nice equipment, so my production level goes up, like, you know? Congratulations. Perfect. Well done. That's amazing. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm saving myself quite a lot of money, you know? Because it wasn't just cigarettes I smoked. I smoked a lot of weed. Well, that all adds up. It does cost. Yeah. You know, there's a price to everything. I mean, I do miss the weed, i got to be honest, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I smoked it for 22 years, you know? It's a big part of the life, you know? Yeah. But uh, my, I think my health comes first, you know? I used to, and I gave it up. And uh, I've done it, like, maybe a handful of times since I quit. And I, I get a really weird trip on it now all the time. Yeah. I realize now that I stopped, I don't like being out of control. It's not yeah. that it's like, it's not, it feels almost like, like years ago what acid would feel like in a way that, not the, the hallucination, but the feeling of out of control. I get yeah, yeah. from weed now, and I don't like that part. I, I yeah, don't... put you in a different zone. Yeah, that you know, one time was a great place to be, and now it's like, yeah, it's not cutting it for me anymore. Yeah, well, to be honest, I feel like I, I much prefer being in hundred percent control of my mind. You know. Yeah. Because I spent so many years not being. Yes, exactly. You know? I mean, yeah. I've done a lot of LSD. I've done mushrooms and paper trips, and I've been there and done it. You know. Yeah. And I come out the other end, so I'm just blessed. Like, it's nice not to feel hangovers anymore. It's nice not to feel burnt out anymore. It's nice. Yeah, to yeah. Your, you know, you, 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 yeah. You, like you say, you got control of your... Uh, yeah, because I partied, like, a lot. When, when I had a lot of different groups of friends that all liked to party, um, I would party with one group, and then they would all go and chill out for a few days, and I'd just move on to the next group. Right. You know? So they were all having rests, and I was just continuing, just going around in a circle, partying with everybody. But it, it's an endless drudge after a while. Yeah, yeah. We're having it legalized here in, in Canada starting with July 1st, uh, all across the board. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I, thought, I thought it already was legal in Canada. Uh, no, it, it's, le uh, it's legal for yes. medical use, uh, but it's going to be legal for recreation oh, right. as well. And oh, right, yeah. will be so it should as well, you know? It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly, this day and age. You know, the, pr the prisons are full of people that's at a bag of weed, you know. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not right. uh, not comparable. Uh, it, it, yeah, and and I mean it clogs up the court the court system. It, it clogs up police time. 
yeah. clogs up the system like ridiculous, you know. Yet, yet it's it's legal to to go and drink as much alcohol and yeah. to get yourself into a, a violent state. That's right. You know. Yep. But it's not it's not it's not cool to to get yourself a bag of weed, go home, get stoned, and play on a PlayStation and have a pizza. It's crazy, you know. Like you say, so many people in the states that can't travel out of this because Canada has been decriminalized for a long time. The meaning that if small amounts, usually if a cop gets you, he'll break it up and just tell you, you know, like dump it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's been pretty lax on that. Depending on the province you're in, too, but most provinces have been pretty lax for a while. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see where it goes. Like this drinking, that's where we're like in Montreal. We're only about forty-five minutes from the U.S. border, and the the drinking age here is eighteen in this province. Yeah, where the states is twenty-one. So all the young kids from Vermont and upstate New York and all those places, where do they run as soon as they turn 18? They come up here and hit the strip clubs and go yeah. wide open. Then they get thrown out two, year, two hours later, you know, puking on themselves. And that, <laughs> they're trying to party it up for all they're worth. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like that for us um, over here. We like we go to Amsterdam to, to freely smoke weed, you know? Yeah. Because um, that's, that's only an hour away on a plane for us. <laughs> Oh, we had Amsterdam. We were talking about that the other night. Xenia hates the picture that I show when we went there. <laughs> we went there once uh, on, a, on a very bad occasion of mine. And, and uh, my, yeah. my mother just passed away. And, and uh, yeah. so it was part of the trip kind of uh, to get away from... from uh... Her mother lived in... Yeah. Uh, like you, sound in... Like, you sound like you come from the Netherlands area. From Latvia. I'm from Latvia, yeah, originally. Yeah. Thank that's you. not far. That's, that's, down, it's that neck of the woods, is it? Uh, it's uh, northeast uh, where Estonia, uh, Lithuania, Poland, yeah, 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 by the Baltic Sea, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, yeah. yeah. So, we went to Amsterdam because uh, my mom passed away, and Andrew wanted to get me uh, off the uh, sort of say stress that I had to deal with because we had to do everything fast because I lived in Canada at that time yeah. already. Uh, so we went there and literally spent one night, and we'll never forget. And Andrew now tells it to everybody on the internet. It's like it's one of those things that you never want anybody to know, like including your parents and best friends. And now, like Andrew, just using it as a throwing his wife under the bus, so to say. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, but it was fun. It was fun, I must say. <laughs> what happens in Amsterdam stays in Amsterdam. Well, yeah, well, that's what I thought, but I guess it doesn't apply. I broke the rule on that. One. Yeah. For these North American people, only Las Vegas counts. So he <laughs> yeah. doesn't understand anything about Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah. We had a good time, we'll say that. <laughs> yeah. So how long have you guys been YouTubers? Um, we were on for about a year. Xenia and I, our business, well, uh, long story short, Pusha Studios. Pusha is the name of the town in Latvia where Xenia's mom grew up. It's about 50 kilometers from the Russian border. Yeah. So that's where we got the name and we started this business a couple of years ago but we're in in day-to-day -day life we're uh, i do videography she does photography we do right. weddings corporate events and stuff like that but we had up some videos and i was putting up stuff that i do in like the off season things that i can't do for customers you know things i want to do and i was putting about 30 40 hours of video into it and like for what 30 views yeah. and finally i said to hell with it like i tried it for a year and a bit and i'm like i'm done i had enough and then we seen a video from Peter McKinnon when the apocalypse started. And he's like, you know, this is your chance. Don't let that bring you down. This is going to weed out the people who don't want to do it. And so I was telling the exam, I said, you know what? Let's just see what it looks like. So I went and started and started growing my channel a little bit. And people started coming. I didn't care about, I don't care about making money off of it. I don't. I'm, I, yeah. We just monetized yesterday, actually. We applied. I mean, Peter McKenna is a bit of a phenomenon in himself, you know? I mean, yeah, yes. He gained over a million subscribers in less than a year. I think it took him about nine months. Nine months, that's right. Yeah, and it's two million now. So it's yeah. Awesome. I mean, as soon as, you start, as soon as you get a million, I mean, now he's knocking about with Casey Neistat, and and as soon as you start going in those circles, yeah, you you, you can you can do nothing but but skyrocket, you know. Yep, but you can also plummet too, and you got you know it's like a musician. You still got to watch and make sure you keep your crap together. Yeah, yeah, put together. But, but I mean, he is a talented photographer. He is. Like, that's why I don't like when some people, like, say, oh, the big guys. Well, okay, if you're talking about Jake Paul types of that, fine. They, they got into Disney. They're like a boy band of the music world. Yeah, yeah. But this these guys really worked their way up. There was their talent. Yeah, I mean, he used to work in a camera shop, you know, and, and, exactly. and then one day he decided, I'm giving it up. I'm going to give YouTube a try. Yep. And look where he got him. Yeah, yeah. He used Sometimes to you just got to take that leap, you know? And he also worked for a while filming uh, musicians. Uh, uh, magicians. Magicians. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
that's where he kind of cut his teeth on a lot of that stuff. Too. That's where he gets his slow motion um, skills from. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He's talented. He really is yeah. very, very talented. Uh, yeah. So it, I'm glad that, uh, you know, people with actual talent and, and work get up yeah. there. And he's, he's a likable personality as well, you know? Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. He's got yeah. the whole package going. Well, when Casey Neistat wasn't stupid, he's seen that he was, I mean, he has a huge following. You see this guy rising up. Some people were making comparisons. So instead of like knocking his shit down, he instead says, "Come with me and let's do a collab together." Yeah, yeah. You know, he... He's having another baby now, by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anytime. Yeah, I did see the video. I didn't watch it all, but I did notice it. Yeah, Casey is having one in October, and Peter is having one uh, now. Oh, like Casey's it. having another one too. Yeah. Oh, October. Geez, I'm not. I'm behind and, on everything and lately. Peter is having one oh. like it should be in, in these weeks. So <laughs> I'm keeping up with everything. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but you, Dizzy's putting a link in, in. I don't. I hope you don't mind. He's sticking a link oh. in the chat. Um, it's to my PayPal account. If anybody wants to um, uh, enter the raffle for the cigar box guitar, can you show it once more? Show the guitar since they posted it. Just show the guitar to everybody again. The one you finished. Um, the example. one, I've, the finished one. Yeah, and just say it's an example of what. Yeah, well, it is an example, but I got to be honest. The, the the new one is a lot better. Um, it's just I've just. My my accuracy on cuts and stuff is just. I mean, this is brilliant. Don't get yeah, me wrong. Yeah. Um, but this one, I haven't got oil on it. So if I just show you the difference, they're both exact same bits of wood, but look at one one with oil and one without. Ooh. I mean, the lighting is probably not best. It looks but, um, oh, I can see it. Yes, it looks amazing. Yeah. Sorry. But I... This this one will be finished tomorrow. Um, so if you pop over to my channel tomorrow, you'll be able to see me um, finish it. So what do we have to do to enter? The question was from the chat. Can you explain to everybody what do they have um, to, to do? To enter, basically, you've just got to go onto my PayPal, and, and it's £5 a ticket. Okay. Um, you can buy as many as you want. The reason I've put it as £5 a ticket is because it started off as, as a, a, a fun funder thing uh, where the people would just send me money for nothing which i wasn't really um comfortable with you know so because people were sending me different amounts i thought the fairest thing to do was say for every five pounds somebody have sent me they get a ticket you know what i mean yeah yep. uh, so if somebody definitely. sends me five pound they get one ticket somebody sends me 20 pound they get four tickets that's so cool it was you know? i love i mean I you have a great way of thinking about you. I love the way you take on your YouTube channel. I, I find you have a really good rounded view on the whole thing, and you always look at like a way to be uh, new ideas and a new way to always make sure that somebody gets something in return. And that it's a very interesting style. Yeah. You see I mean, I, I'm as real as they come. You know, there's no uh, there's no back doors on me. It is it is what it is. Well, so uh, you can only keep those. So long, and then people can see through them. Honestly, especially exactly. when you lives a lot. Exactly. I mean, my, my my channel was going real slow until I started doing my live shows. Um, every Sunday, I do a live show, which is such a, a panel of friends. Um, I have different guests on, um, in a different sort of way to you. My guest comes on, um, and it's just part of the gang. Like you know, it's, it's not like an interview sort of scenario. Yeah, um, we just cool. we talk about whatever we want. I mean, the chat um, can sometimes lead us in whatever direction uh, we start right. talking about, you know. Uh, but it's, we have a laugh, you know. We have a couple of drinks and, and a giggle, and we could talk about anything. That's amazing. And then through the weekend, sometimes I do um, live music shows where, where it's just me and my guitar, and, and I'll, I'll sing a load of songs, you know. I was watching some of them today, and we're going back through and that, because we were doing, we had to do a lot of quick research today. We've seen yeah, some yeah. before, but today was like a crunch. So, Xenia and I are both, uh, have you seen this one yet? No, okay, I'll check this one out when we were running. But you got a lot of great work in there. I love your guitar playing, by the way. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you do. I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think my guitar skills are, are great, but I think my strong point is writing lyrics. Yeah, but your strumming in that is pretty tight in that. I mean, uh, I find, anyways. I, yeah, I yeah. Where I've seen a lot of guys do what you do, and believe me, their skills aren't always the strongest when it comes to strumming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been to, I have been told that a few times actually. My strumming is quite tight. Uh, I've been told by drummers as well, which is a you know it's a good compliment. <laughs> well, they're a drummer speaking. Well, past drummer, but still. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 
you also write your own music and words to the songs, that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's quite fascinating uh, to to be able to do all that, you know, like to be the songwriter and to to yeah. play it yourself as well. Uh, you you mentioned a little bit of that at the beginning, but uh, how how did it start for you? Like how how long ago did you start writing them, and how did you realize that you can do it? Um, I started. Um... I mean, my dad used to play guitar and he used to write songs and stuff. So there's always a guitar knocking about the house. Um, so I always strummed a guitar. And when I was about 11 or 12, um, my dad started showing me chords, you know, and a few little few little things. So so I could really play from, from about the age of 11, 10, 11, uh, something like that. And then when I got to about 16, um, and, you know, when you get to, to you know 15 16 you start um, finding your own music you know right yeah. but but there was always music in the house but i i found myself like in chuck berry and all the old 50s and 60s stuff you know so my first influence um with guitars was chuck berry Ooh. you know i used to listen to him all the time and i listen to his licks and think jesus christ how the hell is he doing now with the guitar you know yeah yeah so so I wish I was born in the fifties, you know, I wish I was back then. A bit of a rockabilly guy. Yeah. Um, but then as I got a bit older then, you know, my, my taste changed, although I still love all that stuff, right. you know, growing up then for the eighties and stuff, you know, like dire straits and all those bands and, oh. and then the nineties, I was into Oasis and all, all the indie pop stuff, you know, who, who are you? Cause we're around the same age. Well, a couple of years, I'm 44. Uh, what was your 80s guys like uh, a little bit more than some of the ones you used to listen to? Um, well, I mean, going through the 80s, how old was I? I was, I was still young. Um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, even, like for me too. My eyes, even though like I went into the 90s and I didn't mind grunge and that, I still kind of like held on. To yeah, 80s. but I, I grew up listening to the Beatles and and a lot of country and western, anything my dad listened to basically, you know, and he liked all the old stuff, um, right. all, all good music, Van Morrison and and uh, the Beatles and the Stones, Pink Floyd, you know, all the cool people. We were talking about Floyd the other night, and, you know, there's something in simplicity. And I've heard so many great – I've met a lot of great guitarists, and I've heard so many great guitar solos, and nothing will ever compare to what I hear when I hear the song, the solo for Mother from Pink yeah. Floyd. I think that's got the most feeling I've ever heard in a guitar solo in my entire life. Yeah, yeah. Well, comfortably numb is pretty close there as well. It is, Ooh, yeah. yeah, it is. I just got a certain soft spot for. It. I played even a guitar, and there's that. Da, 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 yeah, da, yeah, yeah, yeah. That bends into it like it's just so long and holds. The yeah, note yeah. I mean, the notes he plays are unbelievable. You know, they are that pain because... that you were talking about in songwriting. You can hear the pain in that solo. Yeah, yeah. Because um, Santana said once, sometimes it's not about the notes, but it's about the gaps in between the notes. 100 percent you know what i mean because the 80s for instance was an area where there was no gaps in anything it was filled with as many trills yeah, yeah, yeah. And, pops and bends as much as you could possibly yeah. but sometimes the gaps in between those notes uh, are what makes it yep it breathes you know? yeah yeah the famous guitar. i mean pink floyd uh, you know there's something else you know oh, yeah. stevie ray vaughn was another one that was amazing for that yeah the soul, just nothing but soul when he's playing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd love to be a, an amazing lead guitarist like that. I mean, I, you know, I tried to play some licks, but I, I'm just a strummer and, and a songwriter, you know? Well, that's okay. That's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with a good songwriter, man. This is cool. Yeah, I play every instrument on that song. It's amazing. Quite quiet. I don't know if they can hear it. Yeah, I don't think it's that's amazing i must say uh yeah. like i was so i was watching through your uh videos again as i said today and uh, you know, just uh, the ability to do something like that always fascinates me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just my, uh, 
I don't know. It's, it's, it's how I relax, and you know, I don't think of it. I don't think of it. Um, it's it's hard for me to find time to to do that sort of stuff at the moment with uh, Kate not being well and, and having a new baby, you know. Mm -hmm. So I try and put as much time into the channel as I can, um, because with these new rules, I mean, everyone's chasing chasing the goals to get monetized, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was monetized until the new rules come in. So, oh, no. and I wasn't. I didn't have enough subscribers. So now I have. So hopefully, I'll be re-monetized. Did you reapply again? I, I don't think I've got to. I think they're just going to automatically reapply. Um, I need another four hundred hours of watch time, which By I'll get this anybody, week. Anybody out there who hasn't subscribed yet to us, please go and check them out. I'm sure you'll find lots and lots if you like. Like. And just and try to get on that 400 hours. Okay, we're gonna help. Yeah, you. I'll get I'll get that 400 hours this week. Well, I'll get it by the end of next week. I've gained. I added 500 hours this week. Oh, excellent! My, my channel is is going crazy. Seriously, it's it's just. That's it's, amazing. That's great. Us for us, yeah. the live streams really helped. Like it, it boosted us. We've gained last 60 days. We just put up the other night 200 uh, 218 thousand minutes and. It was just like bang, 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 bang. The bang. last how how long? In the last uh, sixty days since we started the live streams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Well, in the last twenty-eight days, I've had sixty-seven thousand minutes. Oh, wow! Wow, that's really good, though. Excellent. That's amazing. You know, once it starts going up, it does. So. Exactly. Yeah. Because my because you do know that the, your goal um, should be twenty thousand minutes a month. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you need. Yeah. So that was my goal because I wasn't even reaching that three months ago. That was my goal. And then every month it's been going up. Um, I was looking on breaking 50,000 minutes this month and I broke 67,000 minutes. So that's great. Yeah. Tough. You're well, on, it's, it's not going to take you very long. I'm really going in the right direction, you know, and, and it's the help of my subscribers. I mean, my, my, my subscriber and my, the community around me is unbelievable. Yes. Seriously. I mean, I go onto people's live streams that I've never been on before. And as soon as I chat in, in the chat box, they're, they're going crazy saying, oh, my God, Hazy Days is here. And I'm thinking, what the hell? You know, I have so many people playing my music on their on their live streams, on their videos. And it's it's really, really helping me out. Like, well, your music is amazing, too. Like I see in the chat, yeah. too, there like Laj, uh, the guy from Montreal here. Uh, he said, I just subbed to you. Uh, it was the song fantastic you know so the music uh yeah, yeah. team actually is, uh support you but i'm sure i'm also coming back and check your other well there you go. donna show is in the chat as well she's another one that's helped me out massively i'm with rant jams um you know they play my music all the time all the time that's good i'm glad it's going up for you you deserve it so yeah you know and that's why when you when you offered to uh have me on you know i thought you know i've got to do it well, I'm glad you came. I mean, and that's what we did from the beginning because we put a lot of work into our stuff. Like I say, our videos, a lot of people used to praise us for our cinematic work. So we did the first live stream because we never wanted to be live. We never wanted to be in front of a camera. So when we did it for a 1,000 subscribers, then people said, oh, you should do it again. And we said to ourselves, well, if we're going to do it, we got to have some point to it. We don't want to do it just for views. Yeah, and we started bringing people on, and then we got a good, the same as you. We got a very good audience that stays around. You notice everybody has a blue wrench. Yeah, yeah. We do the whole equality thing here because anybody who comes in being stupid and just wants to sub people, they tend to leave within a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I give everyone a blue wrench, uh, but I've just made a decision to take them off everybody on my t this Sunday show, purely because I feel that if a newcomer comes into your chat and is full of blue wrenches, it's intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. So what, I'm gonna, so what I'm going to do now, because I have regulars every single week that come come along to see me and you, Dizzy, because mm -hmm. um, you, Dizzy's a star in his own right. Um, he does great things on his channel. Um, he builds he builds motorbikes and gives them away to less fortunate children. Him mm -hmm. and Tina, the maid, they they they, they get a um, they fundraise all year, and then at Christmas time, they buy a big load of toys and, and go and give them to families that haven't really got much. You know. That's very cool, though. That's so yeah. It's, it's what they do is unbelievable, and I mean, I've had a lot of support from them as well. Um, what was, what was I saying? What was my point? Talking about wrenches, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to take I'm going to take all their wrenches off them, and I'm just going to Kate, who's my partner, is going to be she's she's Queen Wrench. Everyone knows she's Queen Wrench, and then I'm just going to point two different 
two different wrenches um, every week. I mean, oh, you dizzy, yeah. you dizzy might keep his if he's a good boy. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he is my he is my left hand monkey. <laughs> Uh, we had a question about where is your music available? Do you have a, like on a SoundCloud or, or Spotify or somewhere where we can listen? No, well, this is this is a, a thing that I'm trying to get sorted now. I've just bought the domain um, hazydaysmusic.com. Excellent. Amazing. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah, so uh, I'm in the process of trying to set up a website where they can literally download music, uh, download my music nice. um, for a small fee, you know? Yeah, of course. That's so, sort of like like iTunes or whatever, but it's direct from me, you know. Um, and I'm also going to produce a CD. Um, I did say when I got it a thousand subs, I would produce a CD and give five away. And then um, whatever I got left, um, obviously a lot of people want to buy them, so I'll, I'll sell a few. But I, I think the future of, of music is in downloads, you know. Oh, definitely. And streaming, of course. That's why I asked about the Spotify, for example, which is one of the biggest right now in streaming uh, the music. And you can set up your own account there free and upload your own music as well mm -hmm. and uh, build actually fan base on it as well, you know. And then yeah, yeah. Actually put it into your uh, web page, like the traffic from there. Uh, it's, yeah. it's definitely because people are asking, like, where can I get the music? <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they've been asking me. Um, there's a lot of people that's, that's listened to my music lately, and it's, it's mind-blowing, to be honest. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. For a long time, since... I mean, I started writing songs when I was 17, I think. And the, re the reason I started writing songs was because I wasn't very good at playing other people's songs. <laughs> well, so I thought, if I write my own, then I can be wrong. You, you know? know? You know who said that before? before? Gordon Lightfoot. So there you go. You're in the classes with him. <laughs> Who's he? I don't know who he is. Oh, you never heard of Gordon Lightfoot? He's one of the most, uh, probably one of the most famous songwriters of the 70s. He wrote the song The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald and all these big, big folk songs. Yeah, one of the classics. Yeah, and he said the same thing as you just said right there. That's a Did you joke it? That's cool. So there you go. No, I've there never, I swear you. to God, I've never heard of him in my life. <laughs> no, that's why it's even better because it shows you're in the right company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like but that, that's, that's the truth. That is why I started writing my own songs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, and then oh, I just realized I had, a, I had a talent for, for stitching words together, you know? Well, because sometimes nice I'll write a song and I don't even know what it means. And then a few years later, when I'm playing it, it, it just seems to make sense to me. You know, certain certain scenarios or certain situations I'm in, um, it'll, just, it'll just make sense. I mean, yeah. I wrote a song when my dad died. It's called Whispers in My Soul, and that touches so many people. Oh. It's unbelievable. It's nice when you write a song that really connects with people. It's a good yeah. rewarding, rewarding feeling. Yeah. Because, I mean, everyone everyone goes through loss and stuff. I think that's why people relate to it so much, you know? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Because, it's, because it's so honest. Exactly. And when you lose, especially when you lose a parent, it's a completely different... I mean, losing anybody is always, uh, you know, a sad. And yeah, yeah. I, I mean, a parent is, is another lose. level. Yeah. But it's, it's, I mean, it's people that lose children, uh, which is horrific, you know? Yes, exactly. Like a close family member, for sure. It's uh, it's and it's amazing music. I think a lot of times is for people like to get away to it. Like for you, as you said, writing it is. But I think for lots of people listening to it is a kind of a way of therapy, so to say, as well. At that it's, time, it's, it's definitely therapy. Definitely, you know. I mean, I I try when my dad died. Um, I tried bereavement uh, therapy. And I, I was 27, and I was sent to a woman that was in her 60s, still had both parents alive, and she was trying to tell me that life ain't too bad, you know? Yeah. It was, you know, she was never, ever going to help me. Yeah. It, was, it was never going to happen, you know? There's no connection there for you. There. No. And then, and then a few years later, then I, I went for some other therapy called CBD, or something like that, Cognitive th Therapy okay. Behavior. Okay. Where, where they, they basically delve into uh, um, core beliefs, mm -hmm. if you ever heard of that. Um, but they basically figure out where, where, where the problem stems from. And it was unbelievable. The, the guy that uh, was, was doing it was my age. Um, he had a pretty rough background. I could relate to him. You know, it was just, and, and it worked. I felt like after two sessions, I felt like he fixed me. It was unbelievable. 
Yeah, cognitive, yeah, cognitive behavioral, behavioral therapy, therapy is known to be one of the most effective, effective ones. In, 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 why? Because, why? because it, it gives you keys, uh, you know, uh, to how to work with things. Uh, and yeah. it like it takes, well, it, it takes it takes you back to, to the, the trigger point of, of why yeah. you act certain ways, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and I didn't realize because all, 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 all through growing up and stuff, um, I used to get into a lot of fights and, and a, a lot of trouble I used to get into. Um, and, and it would all boil down to um, because I used to get embarrassed easy, you know? And mm -hmm. it was easier for me to get into a fight with somebody than feel embarrassed. You right. know what I mean? Right. And uh, and as soon as I delved into this, this situation and, and realized that what the trigger was, um, it helped me deal with it when I felt like it was, you know, when I felt like the trigger was about to be pulled, I could I could look back at you know, the therapy, and, and, and I could fix the problem instantly, you know? <laughs> exactly, because I think people are, are struggling with that a lot, you know, and, and I mean, it affects everybody, uh, like when, what you're talking about, you know, not just you, but the people around you, the family as well, so uh, yeah, yeah. It, to, 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 that you did that, and the people that do to find that, because it doesn't have to take, uh, you know, like it used to be psychoanalytics for years laying on a couch it doesn't work like that anymore it, the effect can be much more faster it can start living again so to say yeah 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 it was brilliant you yeah. know all, all this going and laying on a couch and they're showing you pictures of every picture looks like a vagina you know <laughs> yeah roar shark mm -hmm. test yeah <laughs> sorry I'm a, I'm a psychologist by education so that's why <laughs> diving yeah. into um, yeah, definitely. So uh, CBD, <laughs> I call it CBD, but CBT it is. Uh, if anybody is looking into something, that's definitely yeah, yeah. But it, it's it definitely worked. It definitely worked for me. You know. Uh, what are you listening yourself to, uh, uh, like now when you when you do get that down feeling? What what, what do you listen to? What music do I listen to now? Um, I still listen to all the old stuff. I, um, I don't really like modern music. There's, there's not many. I mean, I still listen to like Noel Gallagher and, and all our music, uh, the new stuff they bring out. Um, but I always revert back to the old stuff, you know, sort of stuck in my ways. I don't think people are writing songs like they used to. No, you know, every, everything is everything is like on a production line, and it's just fired out. There's teams of songwriters. And it's, it's, there's no meaning to anything. And when you listen to some of the lyrics that the kids are singing, you know, it's it's, it's frigging terrifying, to be honest. <laughs> you know, and it makes me sound like an old man, but it, it's true. You know? Well, you know the one thing about music, though, over time, it's always kind of been that way. I actually think YouTube, in a way, has kind of opened up to real music once again that we didn't have a couple of years ago. Is yeah. getting more people like yourselves to start writing and get some chance of being noticed. Yeah, yeah. You know, these opportunities didn't ask, really exist ten years ago, even. Yeah, because I used to I used to write quite a lot, um, but then you know life takes over and you've got other responsibilities and stuff. And my music went on the back burner, um, but now gradually I'm getting the fire in my belly again. You know. Well, so hopefully, there's a lot more to come. I. Uh, I think, especially with everything going on in your life and that, that you've tried so much to use as much time as you possibly can to write, to, to find moments to uh, to be involved with your music again. And that I think it's quite amazing how you do fit it in. Yeah. I think you really need it right now with everything going on. That's what kind of we were talking about the drugs a while ago and that. I think yeah, yeah. it's something that truly replaces what you used to run to. Yeah. Well, to be honest, YouTube is, is sort of my therapy now. You know, well, because yeah. I, I couldn't speak. I always wanted to be able to speak to a camera. Um, two years ago, I never could. Well, I always, was... I always wanted to, but two years ago, I couldn't. But and then somebody nominated me for the twenty-two push-up challenge. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Well, well, a friend of mine nominated me for that, and and you've got to do twenty-two push-ups, and you've got to nominate three people. Yeah. So so I done. I you got to do it for twenty-two days. So for twenty-two days. I had to make a video every single day and, and speak to the camera, you know? So I just embraced it. I thought, right, this is my opportunity. I've got a reason to speak to the camera. You're right. So, so let's do it. And, and by doing that, it sort of took the whole embarrassment of talking to a camera away. 
you know, because I'm uploading a video every day, and at the time it was it was being uploaded to Facebook, but all my friends and family were seeing, you know. Um, and I, and I, I made sure I went to a different location every single day, um, so I made my videos a bit interesting. So if you, all my videos are on YouTube, you can go back and you can see every single one is a different location in Wales, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with a nice backdrop. They, they've all got a, a different, you know, a different place. Whereas a lot of people were just doing every single day, they were in their bedroom in the same spot, you know? That's good. Well, that's always a, the man that goes the extra mile gets the extra notice, so, you know? Yeah, so, so and, and then after, after doing that for 22 days, I had no problem speaking to a camera. Well, it all starts somewhere. I mean, a lot of people we were just saying that I think it was last night or the night before. Most of us that got on here do have some inverted, introverted personalities. I mean, and are getting over something. The more you get to talk to people in here, they always think everybody's so outgoing and they're like news broadcasters that just haven't found an outlet. But really, yeah, yeah. a lot of people here are we're very camera shy. We're very uh, well. I know from my own experience that everybody that I've that I personally know on YouTube that are making videos and got channels. Um, YouTube is helping them because yep. they've got some sort of issue, you know? Yep. 100%. Um, and, and, that, and that's a fact and uh, it's helping me. It's, you, it's... you can go back and watch your, what, it's going to be what, our 50 some interview, I'd say. Yeah. And you go back and watch most of our interviews at some point during the time that that person's on, they come back to that story and it's either they had trouble speaking in front of, in public, or they had trouble being in front of a camera. Or the you know self esteem issues and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. It comes up almost every interview at some point. And you know what is yeah. interesting too that uh, it's really I and I always say that that there are more things in common uh, among all of us uh, than than there are not. Like the more people we yes. we talk with, we realize yeah, yeah, yeah. so many things in common among all of us. You know, and it's unbelievable because there's people from New Zealand, from UK, you know, from South America, and still there are these things that you just mentioned. That almost all of the people that we had on, and including yep. us, you know, uh, it's it kind of unites in the same way why we are on YouTube or, or the why it is a part of our personality. Because I used to talk to people and I use this term, I'd be telling them, like, oh my God, we're like twins almost, you know, because we're hearing the same story. And then I stopped saying it after a while because I'm like, I sound like a bloody broken record at this point. Yeah. But it's amazing. Everybody you have so much more in common with than differences. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I got friends all over the world because of YouTube, you know? Yep. Like you, Dizzy. You, Dizzy lives on the other side of the pond. You know, he's in America, and and we are like brothers. Seriously, we're we're so close. We, you know, we hang out a lot online, um, like doing live shows and stuff. But but off off YouTube, we hang out as well. You know, on on actual hangouts and stuff. And uh, you know, we spend a lot of time together. And we're, you know, we've grown grown up in totally different places. Um, but we're so we're so alike. You know. But there is, like you say, once again, you know, you, you get to meet, you get a better chance of meeting people more like you on YouTube than in real life because you're open exposure to that many more people that you wouldn't have the chance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing platform. It's an it amazing is. platform. And, and you uh, embrace for what it's what it is. There, there's so many opportunities right now. Not everybody just thinks money like is opportunities here, but there's so much more besides money to get out of this here. Yeah, yeah. You know. And I think in a way, uh, people are more open on YouTube as well, because although we are on the camera and it kind of it, it looks like, uh, well, we are out on the open. But at the same time, there is still that piece of glass in between of us and the audience. Yeah. So it, in a way, it, it helps to talk uh, and be more free uh, than you would in a conversation with the person face to face because yeah, yeah. Of glass in the middle. Right? So, so, sometimes, like I said, I do a Sunday show every Sunday at eight o'clock. Um, and it's so easy to forget that you're actually broadcasting live. Yes. Yes. You know? Yeah. But sometimes I find myself saying things and then realizing, oh, hang on, let's take a step back a minute. Yeah. You know? Because, I mean, we only put we only put on really um, what we want people to see to a degree, you know? I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff in my life that, that people haven't got a clue what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Same of everybody, you know? Of course. You know, I mean, I, I, could, I could have everybody in tears if I started telling them you know the the real the real um shit that goes on in my life but youtube is my fun place it's it's, it's where i want to be happy you know yeah. so i leave all that shit behind and as soon as i put the camera on it's 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 time to to try and you know bring some happiness to people you know that's another point of it too is you can make it what you want to make it here 
that's the nice thing about it too. You know, you're the, the kind of the gatekeeper, and you can release or or keep locked whatever you decide to. There's no rules on that. That's it's like Taylor. Yeah. Um, I think you've clicked on my picture because they can only see me. That's good. That's okay. <laughs> Have a look at the bottom. On, there's probably a white square around my box. If you click off that, they'll see yeah, you I too. Know. I know. It was on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was telling them in the chat a while ago, I because now tonight we had to switch the last minute, so Xenia's got the main one in front of her tonight. This is the first time. And I said, I guess it's only fitting that our guest tonight is from on the other side of the pond who drives on the other side of the road. <laughs> that tonight we have the controls on the other side of the table. I guess we're doing an honor of you. So I feel yeah. like such a duck out of water tonight. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You're doing great. And I'm trying to type, and I'm looking over. I'm not used to that because I'm used to always being here in the camera. Yeah, right yeah. There. So I feel like, oh, God, I'm ignoring him, and I'm turning back and have yeah, leave the chat to me. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you're doing great. You're doing great. I think it's flowing nice. I'm a control freak, so I'm not used to this. So I'm yeah, like, oh, but, me too. Me too. <laughs> I think of James Hetfield when he when he uh, burnt his arms there. And, uh, he was actually here in Montreal that happened when he couldn't play guitar for a couple of weeks. Yeah. He was all in a sling, like, and he didn't know what to do with his hands. That's kind of what I feel like right now. So. <laughs> People are gonna look. They think I'm gonna think I'm getting frisky with myself. I keep doing this all the time. I don't know what you're <laughs> or doing. I got <laughs> you know when you sit there with your arms crossed, it's, you cut. You, it's, it's like a protective barrier. Yeah. That's yes. right. That's why I don't you, want to be you closing it. yourself off. You should just lay your arms free. Be free and open. Oh, believe me, when this live stream is done, I'm tearing. I'm going back over because I know there's a driver issue when I got going on. I'm gonna fix it tonight because <laughs> I can't do this again. I know it's on the back of his head. <laughs> Because yeah. last night we had on, uh, do you know the channel Night Shame? No. Yeah, he was in the chat. Then. Yeah, so uh, he okay. might even still be here. He has a pretty big following, about 2,300. And we had him on last night, but he has trouble with Hangouts because he uses an iP uh, iPad Air 2. Yeah. And it has trouble setting default to Chrome. So every time he tries to do Hangouts, it crashes. Yeah, yeah. So yesterday we did a dry run, and we set it up for a way to run him through on a secondary Hangouts. Went on last night, we had trouble, so then we were frigging with the drivers trying to get him to be heard, and I'm sure that's probably what happened. So I think something clicked in halfway, so I got to frig with that when we're done. Because <laughs> I'm like you. I am I like to do my own thing. I like to fix things. So <laughs> And I yeah, have yeah. Raj here who says that you don't have to freak out about the numbers or anything. You just have to enjoy and have fun. Oh, I'm right? enjoying it. Yeah. You're a very good give guest because otherwise I'd be thinking about it constantly and tapping my fingers. Yeah, so. give me yeah, no, yeah, don't worry about it. Just relax. Just relax. And that's what we told people when they come on here. They're worried of coming on all the time. And I said, within five minutes, you're going to forget that there's even a screen. Yeah. And we've had people literally in tears. We've had, uh, we've gone you... pretty strong stuff. Not purposely. We never take nobody where they don't no, want to go. Just goes into but them. after a while, they get more and more comfortable, and then they open up about stuff like. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Yeah, uh, it takes takes a lot to phase me, really. Yeah, and some people go deeper. Like Xenia's been through a lot, and she kind of opens up sometimes. And. The yeah. other night I talked about my aunt and stuff like that. I'd never even mentioned that before. On the, the one, the one time I've only ever uh, my emotions come out was uh, last week. Um, I I done a live music show and everybody wants me to play um, "Whispers in My Soul," which is a song I wrote for my dad. Right. And they always request that one, and it was two days before the anniversary of his death. Wow. Aww. So you know what it's like when it's coming up to the anniversary. You know, like the week before, it's it's a build up because you know it's coming, and then on that day. You know, everything's a million times worse. And then after the day, you go back to hiding the feelings again. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it was two days before the 14th anniversary of his death, and somebody asked me to play it. So I thought, okay, didn't think nothing of it. Started playing it. As I'm playing it, I'm thinking more of it. And I got half through the song, and I had to stop. I almost broke down, like, you know. Well, it's a connection to that song. I mean, it was really... Yeah, but, but I sat there, and I, I had two choices. I could have just broke down or turned my computer off. But I just sucked it up. I had a drink, composed myself for a little while, and then just played the song. Just got straight back into it and played the song, you know. But it messed me up. I mean, I tried to finish finish the show, um, but I was messed up. Every song I was trying to sing, it just it just wasn't going right, you know. Well, it's not going. It's not that it's not going right. It's just the feelings going on. But, but that's that's the only time online I've ever sort of my my true emotions, like you know. Uh, come out, but the the support of everyone in, in my chat was unbelievable, you know. 
because it is hard when I'm doing a music show when I'm sat there uh, playing songs and stuff it's hard for me to keep up with the chat but I always afterwards or the next day go back and read um, as much of the chat as I can you know Mm -hmm. yes uh, and the support on everybody is is unbelievable seriously i've not, i i'm so so lucky to have, have the subscribers and, and this the um support i've got on my channel really is I'm, I'm overwhelmed with them when you got great supporters you have a great channel it really makes or breaks your channel and it's yeah. not you can do all the right things in the world but without good supporters and uh, you know i'm talking like you do like quality supporters like yeah yeah you know, I, we always say our guests and our chat make up 80% of what makes this live stream work. We're just kind of yeah. giving a, a, a platform. It's everybody here that's making it what it is. I mean, there's people driving around in America with hazy days for president stickers on their cars. Oh, people were shouting yeah, it out yeah, in the yeah, chat yeah, 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 like yeah, crazy yeah. in the yeah. beginning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got some supporters yes. there. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but but I love it. I, I really love it, you know. Well, you know, it's uh, it, people really follow the honesty. I still believe that's the truth. When you are honest and genuine and you really put your heart and soul into something, people do see it. And the right people will stick around. And that's great because the that was our whole thing about this too is the bad ones come in once in a while, very rarely, and they usually last about three minutes. And they, re you don't even have to yell at them because they they burn themselves out like children. They realize there's no yeah. nobody's going to get a reaction out of them. Yeah, yeah. Can They're you fine. see Dizzy in the chat there saying not just not just you, you goof? Because a few of his supporters now there's a, there's a there's a debate going on who's going to be president, me or Dizzy? Oh, <laughs> so it's like a running campaign. Oh, who's got the most supporters? I think we're going to have like an election and all this nonsense going on soon just gonna say that that sounds should, like a good yeah, collab thing going fun. yeah <laughs> yeah well that, that's what's happening at the moment but he knows i'm gonna wipe the floor with him but i do i do like the, the fact that he's uh he stood up to challenge me <laughs> give yourselves each give yourselves a month of campaigning and then have a final deciding night yeah yeah um, which is what we're gonna do and i think there's gonna be some um like challenges involved and stuff you know i like that I, I done it. I, I've been doing a few eating challenges uh, lately. Well, I'll tell you. What, sorry to interrupt you. I gotta say this before you go any further. If you do decide to do that, you give yourselves like a month or something like that. Yeah. We would like to hold the debate one night. Yeah. Well, do you know what? You're not the only person that have said that. We got a lot of people that want to hold the debate. Okay. Well, if you want, let us. Uh, we'll know. we'll bear you in mind. Yep. Let us know. Let us know. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's a few people that have have offered. <laughs> okay, there you go. So it's nice to to have another person on the list. Yeah. Yep. No, definitely. That's. I mean, I, I mean, we might let everybody. We might have a week of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I done a hot dog challenge. I was trying to say how many did I eat? I ate twelve hot dogs. Yeah, you were. Uh, <laughs> how was that? Um, it, it would have been fine, but. I made a mistake of the night before. I, I made myself six just to see how it felt. Mm. So I had six the night before, and they were still in me when I had the 12. Oh. Put it that way. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the day before that, I'd I, I done the, the times two spicy noodle challenge. You know the hottest noodles in the world? Yes. See them? Yeah, well, I had to bowl of them. Wow. It was you. Uh, who, who? Somebody did it with you, right? My sister. Me, my sister, and Sunshine. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, that man, you got the stomach of iron on that one. I had yeah, that before. was uh, that was hot. They were yeah, they were some seriously hot noodles. noodles. I'm just watching you. Uh, Donna Shaw was asking, did you eat anything next day after that? Do you know the next day, Donna? Do you know what I ate? Three hot dogs. Oh my <laughs> God! So you had oh wow. I had, in two days, I had 21 hot dogs. <laughs> yeah. Nuts. Yeah, you're not smart. Oh, yeah, I agree. And they only started coming out today. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, oh, it was a uh, oh. man, stomach of iron. My hat's off to you on that one. Yeah, I, then I, I challenged Etad, who was in the chat. I don't know if he's still here, but Etad, give it a go. Uh, fair dues to him. He accepted the challenge and he tried, and he managed to eat seven and a half. Wow. There he is. Jeez, wow. That's that's a lot of hot dogs. That's but yeah, it is a lot of hot dogs, yeah. But yeah. at least you give it a go. 
Well, I, I I don't know. Like I say, after watching your video, I had to take a couple of roll aids, and that was just from watching it. I was like, yeah, yeah. I might put Andrew on the spot with that. I'm good at that one. We did the lemon challenge, uh, lemons for leukemia. Andrew didn't know anything about it till I brought the lemon to the live stream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know that moment where you want to just kind of like tell your wife? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you're yeah. On the did you eat it? We ate them with the skin and all. We ate everything. We ate everything. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have, you ever tried, have you ever tried the onion challenge? No. That You've got to eat the whole raw onion? No. It's got to be a hundred. It's got to be two hundred and ten grams, and uh, eat it as quick as you can. The record is set by a guy called Furious Pete. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He no. does eat challenges, uh, but he managed to eat it in forty-two seconds. Oh, <gasps> wow! Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It took me ten minutes on my oh. second try. I done it twice, two days in a row. Oh, the, oh my the, goodness! The first day I done it, I I I ate half the onion and give up. I thought I can't do this, yeah. and then it was playing on my mind so much over overnight. The next day I went and bought another onion and done it again, <laughs> and I ate the whole thing. That's dedication. <laughs> it was it was horrific. Seriously. You know, yeah, some people do that, you. and and I mean, really, <laughs> onion contains a lot of sugar. They are on, they are even for yeah, burning. and it was it was a hot onion though, a burning yeah, one. That's a lot of onion, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't be able to do that. I can eat three lemons if needed. I love lemons, oh. but onions wouldn't be the good. Furious thing. Pete, yeah, that's the guy that uh, with um uh, uh, Atwood there, the big blogger. What's his name? There, he was in yeah, because he's from Toronto. Uh, who was just saying it here? Uh, Laj was saying that. Yeah, I know who he is. He was on. Uh, He's a bodybuilder. He does um, yes. bodybuilder supplements and stuff. Yeah, and he. Uh, oh my God, what's the name of that big? Uh, it was driving me crazy. Atwood. Atwood is like one of the biggest on uh, YouTube. Like got seven million followers. Laj, can you help us here? Yeah, because it's driving me crazy now. Who is it? Uh, his last name is Atwood. He's famous for those prank uh, YouTube prank videos. You know he. Made it look like he's crashed the four wheeler with his son onto it, took off with it. And oh yeah, yeah, the one yeah. That would, for the love of God, thank you. Yes. The one who threw his threw his baby over the balcony. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. That's, that's the one. And then does his it. personal vlog like he's like Eminem or something like that? You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, that's where I seen him a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, but he's he's like a professional um, eater. He, he goes to yeah. those contests. He is he is a a proper beast he, he's so fast he, he's like a food processor when he's feeding it pushing like hot dogs from... but but going on uh, back to the the hot dog challenge um, i was curious after eating 12 what what the uh the world record was and it's unbelievable i watched it with my own eyes and the world record is 72 hot dogs <gasps> in in 10 minutes how can you even place he was them? a little skinny guy wasn't he that did it no that's um Matt Stoney. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he come third. He, okay. he, he managed to eat he managed to eat 48. And but like he, he, he's another one who, who is unbelievable at eating. I can't remember the guy that, that's won, but they're literally jamming him down their throat. Well, I worked it out. To eat 72 hot dogs in 10 minutes is 8.3 seconds a hot dog, and that's without breathing. Jeez. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's with no space to breathe, you know? Oh my god, oh my god. But how can it even fit? Like that's an enormous amount of food. Yeah, yeah. Because and what will they do with the buns? They they take the sauce out of the bun, dip the bun in water, and then just jam it in them up. That's why I can't watch it because it turns my stomach. The dipping yeah, yeah. The dizzy just wrote is very sick to watch. I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. I mean they're literally jamming sausages down their throat, like pushing them down, you know? Yeah. Two at a time. Is it's it's crazy. It's it's amazing and disgusting all in one. Yeah, Maurice yeah, yeah. Is saying seventy-two. Couldn't he just make it to hundred? <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Yeah. It's sure. guaranteed after after they finish, they gotta go and throw it all up. They can't oh, keep yeah, yeah. There's no way around it. There's no way around it. There's... Did someone say pep top is no? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Are there any other crazy food challenges that you have done? No, that's a. Uh... I don't think I have. Anyway, let me think. I don't know. I forget a lot of stuff. Um, speaking, of, speaking of food, did you hear about Anth you know Anthony Bourdain, the famous chef that travels, like does Discovery Channel and all those big shows? No, never heard of him. Oh God, he's yeah, real he's a celebrity chef uh, and does reviews of restaurants in different places. Yeah, if anybody, I'm sure some of you will know him in the chat. He ended up he committed suicide today. Oh, you joking? 
How old is he? He's 61. 61? Yeah, yeah, he was battling drugs problems for a long Jesus. time. And That's I unusual for, for an old guy to commit suicide. Yeah. yeah Normally, if, if you haven't committed suicide by the age of 45, you're pretty safe. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but he's had a lot of emotional problems, a lot of alcohol and drug abuse yeah, yeah. and stuff. And also, he oh, was horrendous. traveling all the time because uh, uh, he was doing the show without reservations. I think this was the seventh season. Bring up a picture of him. Huh? Uh, and um, Donna Shaw is asking if she can have backstage passes when I do a tour of the US. There you go. <laughs> Certainly, Donna. I told you, Dizzy, you can have half price tickets as well. <laughs> yeah, there's any picture on it's good, whichever one. You might even know him. We're just going to show a picture of him for a second. You might even know him already. I went yeah. to see his picture. He was on a lot of shows for years and years. Did a lot of uh, a lot of different shows. On he that. looks like vaguely familiar, but I think he just got one of those faces. Yeah, he cleaned up, and then he had a daughter who is 10 years old right now, by the way. And... Uh, uh yeah, and uh, and I think just the traveling and not being at home a lot. He talked about yeah. that a lot in his yeah. interviews about struggles. With that. I mean, I know he's you know he suffered. Um, that's why he done what he done. But all he's done is put his pain onto other people now, haven't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, but the, I mean, I know a lot of people that have committed suicide. Like I said, friends and uh, family and close friends. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people say it's a coward's way out, but I don't know. It's it's easy to judge when you're not in that position at yeah, that point. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, and most most people who commit suicide, there's no there's no signs that they're going to do it. That's true. You know, most it's, people that say they want to, they want help, and they want yeah, to yeah. stop before it happens. The ones that I also know a lot of people that, that say they're going to commit suicide just as you know, just for attention. Yeah, of course. Um, but the one the ones that I know that that have committed suicide, there was no signs. You know, nope. nope. So uh, and I know I know a lot more than I should know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, it's it's quite scary. Well, um, I was just that's what I talked about the other night when I was three. Uh, well, I grew up in a very small town in eastern Quebec. Actually, it's a town of about two hundred and eighty. Very small, and there was very little crime. You know, town of two hundred and eighty people. Yeah. Jesus Christ! There's more than that on my estate. Yeah, no, that's it. So I, that's I uh, probably yeah. more than that in my street. <laughs> it, was a, it was a small place, a very small where there's almost no crime. And uh, um, one night, um, my uncle got blamed for a fire for a large fishing cottage uh, that was owned by Americans, and he was set to go to trial. He was a, my uncle through marriage, and he never showed up at the court. And when they went looking for him, they finally went to the house, and they found uh, he had uh, shot my three uh, my my cousins his wife, which is my aunt, even the dog was dead and he shot himself. So all five were killed. No way. And, uh, it's a town where there was probably almost never a murder really ever. And yeah. yeah. Some, oh, people thought was, some people to this day still think he didn't do it, that it was, yeah. set up. but, uh, so yeah, you talk about no signs and no warning. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's a horrific story. Like at that time, they had like news crews showing up in a town, you know, that was never set up for it. Had never had to deal with that before. And for instance, my uncle, yeah, had an yeah. agreement that they would speak to the camp to the press on agreement that they wouldn't come to the funeral because they were all the same funeral for all five of them. And uh, they did. They kept their word, but then they got to the funeral when they came out with the uh, coffins, or the, the, the the caskets. All of a sudden, a couple of camera guys jumped up from behind the hearse and started taking pictures and stuff like that and everything. And yeah, so yeah, that's horrific. But like Dizzy's telling me to check out Brock Nex's channel. Oh, Brock Nex is an amazing channel. Yeah, yeah, he has a restaurant and he's from yeah. Alaska. Yeah, <laughs> in the chat. Is he in the chat? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Oh yeah, I found him. Go and check him out now. Uh, hi, Steph Apple. Uh, yeah, your lives uh, lately. How did it go? <laughs> um, nice to see people coming back. It's nice to have Len. Um, oh, my God. I'll make because now I'm going to screw it up. Len Sierra Canada here. Well, uh, yeah, it looks like you got a pretty cool channel. Obviously, I can't look at it now, but I will definitely. How would you guys feel about the word sub? How, how, can you repeat that? 
How, how do you guys feel about using the word sub on your shows? So I don't care. I don't care, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I think people are making too much of a big deal of it. Yep. Um, exactly. Yeah. I, I, nobody have ever told me, nobody have ever sent me a, an email from YouTube saying not to do it, not to That's say right. it. That's right. Um, I think it's nonsense because, like, I keep I keep referring back to like Casey Neistat when I when I say this, but he, he always um, tells you to go and sub people at the end yeah. of his shows lately. Yep, 100%. you know, hundred so percent. I can't see it being being a violation of anything. It's, it's, I don't care. If I have the expression. I don't care if you call it subs, turkeys, or flying dildo, whatever you want to call it. Just call it. I don't see any problem with subs any different than any other word on here. Yeah, exactly. the sailors in the sub rock <laughs> next to you are funny as always. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's true. Exactly. We're mm. not here. You know, we're not promoting uh, subs really to begin with. It's a, just a nice bonus side bonus when people do uh, to each other that are in the chat. But that's not what we are about. So therefore, yep. it doesn't matter yeah. how you call them. And because sub for sub, just it just don't work because you, you you're just not going to go and watch those channels. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's, exactly. it's, it's, it's not that you don't want to. It's just you physically can't. It's impossible. That's right. It is. It's one hundred percent impossible. No matter how good the, you want to be of a person and honor it, you can't. It's yeah. It's, you just can't. It's just it's just impossible. And it's just you know. It's just. I mean, the videos are getting longer and longer because everybody wants more watch time. So I mean, videos that used to be a lot of times three minutes or so are now like minimum ten minutes. A lot of them are running twenty minutes and longer. Yeah, much a percentage of them, but you're still not getting the full message of it, and it, it's yeah, impossible. yeah. I mean, my Sunday show um, sometimes it goes on. It's, it's scheduled for two hours. Um, I do a minimum of two hours, but sometimes it, it runs longer if we, you know, if we're having a good night and there's still loads of people in the chat. Yeah, you know, because I get quite a lot of people in. Um, so sometimes I go four hours, you know, and it, it really helps my my watch time. Well, that's what happens with us too. Sometimes we'll hit the four hour mark, four and a half. It's long and some points, and then you get off. And you're like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, four and I've a half. actually done a six hour show. Oh, really? Wow! I, th yeah. I thought I thought it was a five hour show. It wasn't until I went back the next day and realized it was six hours. Oh, cool. Unbelievable! Yeah, we had a manic Monday episode one night where we brought on a bunch that all of us that play instruments, like there was a drummer, another guy plays Bach, another guy I play guitar yeah. and stuff. And we started playing on the channel and going back and forth and stuff like that. That one was yeah. a long time too. The thing is with playing music on Hangouts, um, the audio, there's a battle with audio. Oh, yeah. We so each took turns. It wasn't worth the, the, the noise pollution. It just no, even when you take turns, it's still a battle. It still drops your audio levels and peaks it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not lovely sound. It's no, it's, it's, it's terrible. That's why I've stopped playing music on, on Hangouts. Yeah. Um I'll, I'll only do live shows now on OBS. See, we have OBS. We kind of got caught, and we had a lot of things going on. Work was picking up and a lot of other things. We've had OBS sitting here for like a month and a half now wanting to get into it. And it's not going to be hard. It's just literally finding time to make the switch, and then once we do it, we're going to be good. So Yeah. but and It's pretty good, OBS, but the only thing is you can't have guests. Yes, well, that's it. You can do it, but in, like you got to do a workaround all the time for it. That's yeah. The thing. Yeah, like uh, for example, Achilles and Heathens, uh, they use Skype and OBS, so they have yeah. OBS, but then the guest comes in through Skype and they share it on OBS. So that's the yeah, way right, yeah, yeah. And they are podcasters, so they <laughs> yeah, know yeah. how to put that all together as well. So, uh, but definitely. But uh, when we are gonna have Manic Monday again, we'd love to have you on as well. Uh, that was so much fun. Uh, for people yeah, yeah. Online, I mean. So yeah whenever just give me a shout you know uh we were just doing like kind of uh you know talking about how we got into playing then everybody would do a little bit here and there you know and stuff like that we had yeah, yeah. Like, drums with these drums yeah cause I, I done i done it on ranch jams um what was it called he done a live show he done two of them his first live shows uh, and there was a panel of us and we were all you know playing music taking in turns oh really yeah Oh, I never so, seen that one of his. I'll have to go back and look for that. I'll check it out. Yeah, but I mean, the audio. Whenever you do that, I think the best thing to do is to mute whoever's going to take a turn. Mute everybody else. Yeah. So then, is you you can knock something and it's not going to interfere. You know, because because yeah. you could cough and then it'll automatically uh, the the audio would override to yours. Right. That's true. That's a good point. That yeah, is. so I think by muting everyone, it gives gives the person who's playing the instrument or, or doing whatever, it gives them more opportunity to have a decent sound. 
your you know? priority exactly although it's still not great i gotta be honest no, no, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be like cd quality coming through yeah. you know? but, but when i use obs i can get my sound pretty good when it's just me and a microphone and a guitar you know yeah well yeah you got more control over it there yeah so. yeah it's it's more set up for it so it is it's not battling with any audio uh programs you know Hun, do you want to do a quick call of it? There's so many people in the chat. You want to just address everybody? Uh, well, I'm trying to say hi to everybody who is in. Uh, uh, I see <laughs> M-Trunk just uh, popped in as yeah, well. I haven't seen you for yeah, a while. Yeah, how are you doing? I want to say hi to him as well. Uh, yeah, and Steph Apple is in. She's in our live performances. And if nobody's hit the thumbs up, guys, come on. <laughs> smash our thumbs up. Let's get them up to 50. Thank you so much. And there are some people from your side as well. The WV Modern. Uh, Mozart, he's one of my boys. Yeah, is Ian and uh, Mark Corn. Lol's girl has Mark Corn, he's one of mine. Lol's girl. Yeah, Lancy Air Canada. I love them too. Yeah, they are amazing. Uh, Check them out, guys. They're an amazing channel as well. Cryptic Cowboy came that's in. That's how I roll Power. on a show. And that's how I roll came in lately too. Yes. So uh, thank you guys for coming in. For those of you who just joined us, uh, we have uh, switched the link uh, today on the take two. And those of you who wondered, uh, thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, I some people I haven't seen for a while, like M Trunk. I haven't seen yeah, for a while at all. Uh, yeah, we're glad that you're loving the sawmill videos, by the way, guys. I'm loving it. And uh, guys, thank you very much. We got some of yours tonight as well. I think because we went up. To, uh, God, we went up a lot. We went up another. Thank you for support. <laughs> I think almost, if I got to look back, I think we're almost went up 19 tonight. We're one away from 1,650. Thank you. Wow, the surprise thing is coming up really fast. Yes, that's right, because we got <laughs> a thing planned for 1,700. So now I, I got to speed up my game here. We only had 42 subscribers on in the beginning of February. Do you think, do you think those things, they come from me tonight, those subscribers? I'd say I'd some say of them, so, yeah, yeah, because I just checked before we started the live stream, so. And they are good subscribers. I got good people. And I think some probably have gone to yours as well from our side, I'm hoping. They usually do. So, yeah, I'll just check now. Uh, Donna Shell before was saying that every time she listens uh, to your music, uh, it makes, you, uh, makes her cry. But she also asked, Are you going to play a song for us? For me? Yeah. We'll mute, we'll mute our mic for you if you want to. Listen, it's, it's three o'clock in the morning, yeah. <laughs> And I've got a baby sleeping yeah, right below me. It. We get it. <laughs> we just had to ask Donna ask in the chat. So I'm we sorry, have Donna. Um, if it was earlier and I didn't have a sleeping baby. Yeah, no, I mean, we understand if that. It, if it, if it, it's purely I got a sleeping baby. I got two sleeping babies, but one's 13, so he's not so much of a baby. But, but he's got school in the morning. Next live no, yeah, it's Saturday yeah. tomorrow. When is your next live session on your uh, channel for Donna? She can go over. Um, it'll be this week sometime, as soon as I can squeeze one in. Um, i got to get this guitar finished, which should be tomorrow. And i got my live show Sunday, which is basically just a, like a chat show. Um, and then sometime in the week, I'll squeeze in a live, <laughs> live Donna music said, show. Okay, she understands. And Cryptic Cowboy said, can you hum something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You have it, I'll play. <laughs> That's typical cryptic cowboy. It's such a great <laughs> Mariska. Uh, she, uh, it's 4 a.m. at her place in Amsterdam. Yeah, Mariska, I like Mariska. She comes over to my channel too. <laughs> <laughs> and Donna entered into the drawing. Thank you all, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just gonna <coughs> put the link again for yeah, Donna's in it. There's this so far. I think I've got 19 people in the draw. It must be more than that after this because I've seen some compatible people of our chat as well come going in. Uh, five pounds a ticket, take a part in raffle for cigar box guitar. Uh, a masterpiece, I must say. Uh, you can see them being made on the live streams on April Days uh, channel. Oh, good Soul Life is here as well. Oh, uh, oh, I'll go check on her. I'll be right back. Good Soul Life is in. 10 p.m. You moved to the States, Mr. President. <laughs> I'd love to be tired. I really would. <laughs> oh my goodness. Your camera's gone blurry again. I don't know what's, what's it was happening earlier. It's because uh, it has to be the drive. Has, there's a software that has to be downloaded that Andrew has on his computer. But since we changed it because of our microphone issues, I don't have it. Uh, yeah. So that's why it comes out of focus here. Sometimes. Yeah, it sort of zooms in and goes out of focus. 
yeah yeah yeah. i just don't have the software because usually i don't use this camera that's why um yeah. i wanted to ask you about uh one other uh passion of yours so to say if i uh, may ask about the bikes i seen you bought a bike and there are a couple yeah of well that's, for that. um, that's a recent that's a recent um passion that i've acquired i mean growing up you know i always knocked the ball on bikes and stuff um i like anything with an engine but i've never really owned any bikes myself but okay. since i've been watching like you dizzy and etad and bubsification where they're, they're ripping around on their motorbikes um it just stirred something up inside that made me think i i want one of them you know you know and you, and you only live once so you've got to do it haven't you yes you know for sure. I mean? and, and i i mean i've got so many friends that are dying around me you know you got to do it today you know because you might not have tomorrow that's true. That's very true. So, so I went and bought myself a little motorbike. That's that's why they started this fund for me, because I went and bought a motorbike, um, and within 24 hours, the police had taken it off me. Oh. For, for riding it in a field that was miles away from anybody. It, it literally had a motorbike track carved into it. Okay. You know, I didn't ride it through the streets. I pushed it to the field from my house, rode around the field, and the police turned up and, and seized it from me. Oh my god oh yeah no. yeah so i i only had it for like 20 23 hours this bike and the only way to get the bike back was to go to the pound with proof of insurance and the type of motorbike it was you you can't insure it because it, it's, it's a dirt bike um so basically I, I i couldn't get it back you know that's awful so then oh. the power of power of youtube banded together and started throwing money in a pot for me uh, to buy me a new motorbike which was unbelievable. Um, so that's why I started building the uh, cigar box guitar. Yeah, that's what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. So, so everyone that's that's stuck in, in the pot gets a ticket for for the for the raffle, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that's, that's why. That was amazing, definitely. But I haven't heard the story from the start. Like I heard about you doing. Yeah, yeah, but that's basically what happened. Um, and I'm I got my eyes on a bike now. I'm almost up to to the amount that I need. For the bike so within i think within two weeks um i should be back on two wheels and i'm gonna get a bike that i can insure uh so they can't take it off me uh how you does know? it work in the uh, uk do you have to have a separate license like a driver's license for it or um it as long as the bike is not over a 125 cc okay um you can you can ride it with a driver's license as long as you do a one-day course called the cbt which is basically okay. it's like an awareness course. They you got to ride around some cones. They take you out on the road for a half hour just to make sure, you know, you can ride. Okay. And that lasts for two years. After that two years, you you've got to go and do your your bike license, your proper bike license. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, that... otherwise, I think you got to wait twelve months then to do another CBT. But you can still drive it while you're doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. In those twelve months. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. See, or maybe Andrew, you should uh, get your uh, bike too. We were talking about that. Uh, yeah, well, but to be honest, I'm not too keen on riding too much on the on the roads. Um, it's just I want to be able to. Le I want to legally be able to ride to a field or somewhere, You know. Yeah, exactly. No, that's awful what they did. I, I really, I didn't hear the beginning of it, how it all happened. And, and I must say, that's a, like a highway robbery. Like how? Yeah, that exactly. That's how I felt. I felt like I was being robbed. Exactly. You know? Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. It's had really for days. Sorry, if, if anybody... Go on, sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying, sorry, I had to leave. My daughter came. She goes, been sick for the last couple of days, so that's why I had to run up. So I was listening. Oh, I know all about that. My house has been full of sickness for the last few weeks. Oh, no. It's always fun, yeah. isn't it? Oh, so it's horrendous. My little baby, he added the worst. Uh, every, every time we thought he was over it, 3 o'clock in the morning, he'd be up being sick everywhere. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, when the little ones are sick, that's the yeah. Oh, my uh, my my wife had it for a while. Uh, my oldest son had it for one day, but my little baby seemed to just keep catching it. You know, yeah. like a sickness bug. When you're a family unit, everybody's getting it at some point. <laughs> but I'm lucky because I didn't get it. Oh really? Yeah. Well, good. I, congratulations. I've got that. some serious immune system. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Our yeah, middle, it is good because they all they all rely on me, you know. So our middle son usually is the one that tends not to get it, so he ends up having to take care of all three of us when it really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if I got sick, we're in trouble. 
you know well yeah because it's a lot riding on your shoulders right eh? yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, nothing, there's nothing worse than seeing everybody everybody sick well yeah no it's and it is there's that point where everybody's kind of semi got it and it's the saddest part in a house because nobody can bring anybody up and the one that doesn't have it has been so busy taking care of everybody else that their morale is going down <laughs> it's like yeah yeah it's a dark how day. many how many kids you got we got three Really? Uh, my oldest from my first marriage is 20 and then we have two uh, children together we have an 11 year old and a seven yeah nice we covered all ages <laughs> yeah well i got a 13 year old just turned 13 and a one and a half year old and they're it's starting again you know we got to that stage where it was all like he could take care of himself and now mm -hmm. we're changing shitty asses again it's like uh, CJ and Audrey, the yeah. same uh, age difference. Yeah. yeah, our oldest and, uh, and youngest one has the same age difference as your kids. Yeah. Yeah, So and, and that's why I just wanted to say again as well, Andrew, I think, was going through kind of the same uh, yes. feeling <laughs> about having a baby again at that age, you know, when you finally think. Yeah, yeah. One well, we out. didn't have much say in the, in the matter. You know, it yeah, was... Same here. <laughs> same yeah. here. <laughs> the, the way we found out through the MRI scan, it was that was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Was... They took us into the room to show us the scan, and I was looking at this little thing, um, thinking it was twins. And what I was looking at was the bit of the brain. Oh my god! You know, I thought it was like a little, you know, the beginning of a scan, you know, like a fetus. And um, then when I looked out to the picture, it was a proper baby. Oh my! Like god. a fully formed baby. That's a and shock. it collapsed. Yeah. I, I was that must have, I was going to ask you when you brought up earlier and then I didn't get a chance to. That must have been some shock for you guys, like to see that. I mean, no expectations and MRI, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that, like the way. Yeah, because she went down for she went down for the MRI scan, and me and my son was in the waiting room waiting for it to come out, and then the doctor had come out and said, "Can you come with me, please?" And I'm thinking, "Oh Jesus Christ, what's going on here?" You know, mm -hmm. thinking it's because she's been ill for a long time. I'm thinking, you know, what have they found? And I'm saying, is everything okay? And he's saying, listen, um, everything will be explained when we get to where we're going. And I'm thinking the worst, you know. Then it takes us into this little room where Kate sat. And then they announced to us that they had to stop it because she was pregnant. That's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. But then looking back, um, it's, well, from the, day, from the day that they told us, she was looking at us, she was clearly pregnant, you know. But where she was ill for so long, and it was all to do with her stomach and her bowels mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, we, we thought it was all down to that. And she was having morning sickness. And I thought she was just getting sicker and sicker, you know? Right. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. Every morning I'm laying there listening to her being sick, thinking, Jesus Christ, this is getting real bad now, you know? Yeah. But uh, it was morning sickness. <laughs> oh, my God. That is such, what, that's such a story. Like that's, You know, it's like from those shows that they used to show on, on Slice and, and, and TLC, you know? She didn't yes. know she was pregnant. Yeah. This is so shocking. Like, I can, I can only, I can, can't even imagine how shocking it yeah. is. Yeah, because a few months before, we went to a, fair, a fairground, like a um, fairground called Oakwood. It got all big rides and stuff. And I went and queued up for some food, and Kate and Jack was waiting for me to come back with the food. I've looked across, and she was standing by a table, and I'm looking at her, and I'm thinking, she don't have to look pregnant, <laughs> you know? And I come back with the food, and I, I, I even said to her, I said, Kate, you look pregnant. And she's like, don't be cheeky, you know? <laughs> Shut up, what, what do you mean? You know, there's a difference between fat and pregnant, you know? Yes, exactly. Well, yeah, of course, especially at that time, you know? Yeah. Oh, my and, God. Uh, and she just put it all down to the illness, and it's, you hear these stories, and you think, how, how could you not know? You know, yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. It's, it's very, especially when you're sick, it's easy yeah. to, to, uh, um, yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's, uh, well, when we, when we were in, in the hospital and going for scans, uh, we met this woman in there and she, she found out when she had two weeks to go. Wow. She had two weeks left. She didn't realize she was carrying a wardrobe up the stairs because she just moved house and then she had all these pains and, uh, got rushed into hospital and she was almost full term. She had two weeks to go. Oh my, oh god. my god that's crazy and then your you know your life goes upside down and as you said your your child was uh a week uh a six, week six weeks six weeks premature six weeks of premature exactly so that window to adjust to the idea of having a child again yeah i uh, definitely was short sure and getting eight, everything ready it was oh eight weeks god. it was it, it was exactly eight weeks to the day yeah it's crazy
there's a story in itself. You got to do a video just talking about that. <laughs> yeah, because I vlogged a bit of it, and uh, I am going to make a video called the uh, well, the story of Harry or something. I, I was going to call it because I, I have got quite a lot of footage um, from because as, as soon as we found out and Kate went to get dressed. I switched my camera on straight away when we was in that room, and, and when I got mine and Jack's reaction, you know, right, where we're just mind, our minds just blown. That's amazing. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I, such a story. I, I, I definitely that video would be worth checking out. I think that could really take off. So yeah, that's very cool. So, uh, how did the the thirteen year old feel about it? Like in general. Um, at first, he was because f it's funny because for for a few for a few months before, he was saying to me, "I'm never gonna have a brother or sister, am I?" And I was like, "Well, for a few years before, we bought him a dog four years uh, before because he kept asking for a bro brother or sister." But because Kate was so ill, we just didn't think it was an option, you know. Right. Um, and then when it finally happened, um, he didn't really know how to take it. It was dawning on him the reality of it, you know. And then I was saying to him, you've been, you've been up in your bedroom praying for a bloody brother or sister, haven't you? <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's he's pretty good with him. I mean, it's a big age gap, you know, so. Yeah, but sometimes that can work out better, you know. I mean, when, when they get older, it'll be okay. But at the yeah. moment, they haven't got much in common. Well, that's understandable, but you're right yeah. in the long scheme of things. And they're not like, sometimes when they're so close in age, too, they'll be like stepping on each other's toes and stuff. We've only said that with my oldest son when he was with our other two that kind of actually helped that way. Cause he never felt like there was no chance of him ever feeling like he was replaced or, you know, any of those feelings that could happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because he was an only, uh, our only child for 12 years as well. He sort of yeah. took the, the, you know, um, cause we're, we're pretty close as a father and a son. We, we are pretty close, like, you know, um, so it's, we sort of took a bit of that away from him. Mm. You know, plus he's you know he's just turned thirteen, so he wants a bit of his own independence now. And of course, you know we don't want to bother with me much no more because yeah, because I'm not a PlayStation. If I was a PlayStation, he'd play me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play PlayStation yourself? I got an Xbox. Oh. Well, now <laughs> yeah. father son rivalry, I like it. Yeah, yeah. But um, Etad's asked me what bike am I getting. Um, I'm looking at one he's had. It's like it's like a dirt bike cross road bike, um, like an enduro. Yeah, like an enduro sort of thing. That's what I was I tried, thinking of getting. I, I tried phoning the guy today and he didn't answer his phone. So I'm hoping he's going to answer tomorrow. I've actually been entertaining the idea of getting one as well. If you've seen some of our videos, I do a lot of also train videos and stuff. And my son and I used to, uh, that's what we do together, to, my middle son and I, to, like to spend time together, go out. Last year we took off and went across the half of Ontario and slept in the truck and went off-road looking for all these places. Yeah. And I was thinking about maybe getting an enduro bike just for filming different things because it's so much yeah, yeah. easier. But well, that's, that's what I want to do, I, you know, to, to put, put, put a little different twist onto my channel, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's so versatile, easy on gas, especially with yeah, yeah. Truck. And it's fun, you know. What pisses me off about Canada in general is I can drive. I was I have a truck driver's license. I used to be a truck driver. Yeah. And I can drive an eighty thousand pound rig or a hundred thousand with a triaxle on the road, no questions asked. But I can't drive a bike over fifty cc's. Yeah. I know they're different, but come on, like. Seriously. I know it's crazy. It's crazy, ain't it? It is. I can drive ambulance. I can drive tow truck. I can drive. <laughs> well, I passed my test twenty something years ago, so I can drive. I've got a lot on my license that I can drive that a new a new driver can't. You know, right? Things yeah. have changed. But if I want to ride a bike over uh, one two five, um, I need a bike license. Well, at least you guys go to one hundred and twenty five. Uh, us is fit. Yeah, but no, but to to ride that bike, I need to do a one day course, a CBT CBT course. Oh, really? Um, if I if I want to ride something without doing that course, I can only ride up to a fifty. Oh, okay, okay. You know. Uh, now they just got rid of the law in Quebec this year. They finally got rid of the law that you have to, when you have your training for motorcycle, you don't have to have another rider with you anymore. Thank God. Yeah. Because that sucked too. Anytime you wanted to leave your house, you had to get somebody who had a motorcycle license to come get you. And then you had to follow them and you weren't allowed to oh, be. Oh, was it? Yeah, it's a bit of a ball, ain't it? 
it is it is you know you feel like such a tool you know like it's just yeah yeah like year old guy getting your motorcycle license you gotta have your friend like take you out on a day trip you know like it's like a play date <laughs> you know? yeah etad can't wait to see me do wheelies yes exactly oh and if you see etad do wheelies he's unbelievable he can go for miles oh really yeah well that's something wrong with him it. he's not normal <laughs> i mean he can't eat hot dogs for shit but he can wheelie for days yeah. <laughs> well, I think the wheelie is pretty impressive, so that comes <laughs> And anybody who's decided on tonight, anybody that did join us, please make sure to leave a, a, a comment on one of the videos so I can go check you in as well, please. Uh, Silo was asking, does Hazy Days or anybody here know about Speedway? And if so, are you interested in it at all? Is Speedway the one where um, you've got no brakes and you go around the corner and power slide? Because uh, if it, if that's what he's talking about, I think that's what he's talking about. When I was a kid, I used to love it. Uh, also, there was a question from Donna. Uh, inspiration to write comes to her at weird times and places. What is the strangest place you have ever been when a song inspiration hit you? Good question. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a hard question to, to answer that because I don't really know. I, I, can't, I don't think I can answer that. It just, I don't know, it just happens. If, if, I don't know. Sometimes I could just be sat here with a guitar um, and a song will just come instantly, you know? Like some songs, some songs I've, I've literally written um, as long as it takes to play. They just come straight out, you know? Mm -hmm. And then some songs I'll write, I'll write a little bit or maybe one line and I'll sit on that line for a little while and then I'll build it up over time, you know? Um, but lately, if I if I leave um, something too long, I, I am finding it a little bit more difficult to get back into that feeling, you know? Do you do, you do the music first or the lyrics? Like, how do you get the, your song together? Um, normally, it's, it's both at the same time. Hmm. And Donna says the same for her as well. She just wrote. Yeah. That's what you were just saying. Yeah. It's interesting that it comes to you both at the same time. I, I yeah. always uh, saw that it's either one or the other for people who are doing the music. Yeah. Or, or like the songs in general. That's yeah, no, because for me, it's the music sort of just accompanies the, the lyrics and, and the melody. It's, it's hard for me to, because as, as I write the lyrics, I sort of write the melody. Mm -hmm. And then I just, I just got to find the, the basic chords that will go with that melody, you know? So I, I, I really try and keep it simple, as simple as possible. Well, simplicity is the joy of song singer-songwriter. Yeah. It is. It's really about a feeling more than, you know. Yeah, and then that is it. Literature. Feeling. And, I, and I, I only write songs for myself, you know. I, I, I don't write songs for other people. The fact that other people enjoy my songs is great. But I write songs for me. Yes, you know? well, that's why everybody loves them so much. I think. They're personalized that yes, way. Yes, they're so. Personal. If you're writing songs for other people, then you're a boy band. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. That's yeah, where, yeah. That's where that's done. That's part of the manufacturing yeah. sector. But yeah, I literally write them for myself. You know, it. Uh, you got to do something that's from within, and it's got to be very personal. Mm. And, you know, I bring up a singer always when we talk about songwriters, like. Um, uh, Axel Rose was a great example of that tortured soul that made them so amazing in their first album. You yeah, could yeah. feel that rawness into it. There was just an untamed anger inside of them, just trying to keep it bold enough coming yeah, out yeah. of the pen. You know. But yeah, they were an incredible, incredible band. That's why they impale themselves afterwards because it's such a mess to write such a great song that you know there's another mess for them coming as well. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. You no, know? it's too bad, but it's usually the way it ends up. You've been very generous with your time. I feel bad for you at this yeah. time. We're, we're looking at the time and thinking five hours ahead. It's, it's, tw it's 22 minutes past three, yeah? Um, oh I will God. I will have to start wrapping it up soon. Um, yeah, pe uh, people were so excited to see you. Everybody loves your music. And also, like, uh, that's how we're all saying, love's attitude towards things that you have. Yeah. Uh, you, keep creating your music. Uh, we're so looking forward to you launch your uh, website. Uh, so, uh, you yeah. Know, and I'm not happy. I want you to get up to 50 thumbs up. So, come on, guys. I'm not going until there's 50 thumbs up. 
I like that attitude. <laughs> You're a man after my own heart. Like they always laugh at me here because I have some OCD and I can never end. Like we always stay on after our guest leaves for a bit. I can never end it. I always know the time we started. So say it was 8.03. Well, I'm yeah. either going to end it like on the 33. Oh, or Jesus the Christ. I didn't hit the thumbs up. So there's 48. Come on, we need two <laughs> more people. <laughs> well, they won't hit it just so I stay. That's a good one. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Donna's show uh, went to school with Axel Rose. Really? Yeah, they're from the same town. Oh, that's nice. There's got to be two people watching this that haven't hit the thumbs up. <laughs> Come on, now. there's one. One more. We need one more. Who's going to be the lucky winner? Right, that's they why. They don't <laughs> want you to leave. That's why. <laughs> oh, Flubberneck Epic just put 49 up, he said. If uh, we don't get 50, I'll never come back. <laughs> oh, God, guys, oh, guys no, you're no. going to get him another one then. <laughs> <clears throat> Matt Bond will do it now. Uh, Mark uh, Corn writes, come on, Brian, get your other accounts to throw 20 thumbs it's up. Brian, and come on, Brian. I hope you guys are enjoying tonight. It's nice to have some new faces and lots of returning ones as well. It's always nice to have a good. That's the good thing about this because every night some every our guests always bring some of their people. We have yeah, our yeah. regulars. Everybody's meeting each other and they'll find channels yeah. that they. Really so I, I've been on your I've been on your live shows a few times. I've come I've come into the chat. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. I mean, remember uh, the first tomorrow. time I ever come in. You, you're, you as soon as you read my name, you were like, "That's a brilliant name." I got to speak to you sometime. I, I know that. I remember your name. <laughs> you And both you and Sticky Buds are two that really stick out of my head. I love yeah, both of them. Yeah, yeah. The first thing you ever said to me was about my name. There we go. We got 50 thumbs up. Nice. We well are. done, guys. Uh, so, again, where can we see, where can we listen to your music? Is your website launched already or is it in No, it's not launched at the moment. Um, okay. I've just paid for the domain. Um, I'm still, I've still got 40. 14 days to, to set it up and then i got to start paying there's is a an annual fee of a uh, hundred and something pounds so okay okay so i've got to right. try and weigh it up and, and and see whether it's financially viable for me at the moment because obviously because i'm not making any money from youtube it's all you know yeah. but as i was saying i uh, check it out check out spotify because you can set it up for free and upload your music there and and then get the followers there you know yeah yeah uh, but like you can just you can just go onto onto my YouTube channel. I got a there's a playlist with original songs. Okay. Um, I got a playlist with cover songs and uh, yeah, ev everything's categorized in in playlists, so it's easy to you know to find. There you go, guys. There's a link in a chat. Uh, go and check Izzy Day's uh, um, YouTube channel and all his music available right there. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming and thank you for understanding for yes, uh, our so mishaps at the beginning. Oh, that's uh, no problem. I know shit happens, you know. That was just one of those things the last two nights. You ever have that just for one or two nights, everything seems to go right off the rails and you're yeah, like, yeah, why yeah. do we even keep going on this? Like, So we do really appreciate your understanding. Oh, there we go. We got 52 thumbs up. That's what I like to see. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It was so amazing to talk with you. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have some, some great stories. You're uh, an interesting. I, I appreciate you having me on. I really do. Well, you know, like you said at the beginning, it's good coverage. It's good for everybody. We all win from these kind of things. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, we're all trying to grow, you know. That's right. And we all work together. So all grow. I'd like to thank all my subscribers that have come over and taken the time out tonight to come on to, the, uh, come on to this show. And all the ones that have subscribed to him, thank you very much. And okay. and all of your people that have subscribed to me, thank you very much. Okay. And uh, I hope to see you all on my Sunday show. We just swapped some very good uh, subscribers, we'll call it. Yeah, I'm sure so we have. We've both grown tonight in the right way from this. I'm so. sure we have. But I really appreciate you guys having me on. And um, it's almost you. half three now, so... And a big thank you to your wife in the chat and everything else. And uh, good luck with the kids and everything else and all that. And keep in touch, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, I'll come on again if, if you want when you do that live jam or whatever you said you, you do. Sure. That would be awesome. Thank Love you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. So stay in touch. And I'm going to shoot off now, guys, because it's almost half three. Yeah. But thank, thank you very much for having me. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. You take care of yourself. Bye. Have Peace. a great time. Bye now. Cheers, man. Oh, God, that was a good night for starting off so hard. What a gentleman to uh, put up with our... Uh
technical difficulties. So it's, yeah. especially the time difference. That's what I feel so bad about. Like the guy's already up at one o'clock in the morning and then that happens. So. Yeah, exactly. And and for those of you guys who come uh, from Hazy Days Gang, so to say, we're here every night uh, from Monday to Saturday yep. at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Who do we have on tomorrow night? Uh, tomorrow night we have uh, another guy from UK. Tomorrow, guys, right. we have a Japanese... Uh, Japanese uh, lifestyle, a lifestyle UK. UK. So another guy from UK is going to be staying up late. <laughs> really interesting channel. He's living, a, like as the name goes, he's building a Japanese lifestyle, but within the UK. Yeah. Very awesome. I like people to think out of the box. This guy definitely caught my eye a, while, a couple of months ago. Oh, yeah. It's going to be really, really, yeah. really fun uh, tomorrow, too. So, yeah, we're here six times a week at 8 p.m. Uh, definitely check it out uh, and uh, welcome you back anytime you can uh, drop by. We're very friendly. Yeah, we cover all different. <laughs> we have everything from cooking, uh, cars. We do it tonight, you know, musicians, people oh, yeah. that do vlogging. We did... Uh, We've had beauty. It's, yeah, too much. We have a doctor coming up next week. Yes, Monday we have Dr. Egbert, I'm sure a lot of you know. Yeah. So that's been confirmed. So Monday night. Olympic athlete, for those of you who yes. don't know. Did you know that? He's that an Olympic athlete? Yep. And uh, yeah, we have Colorado Martini next week as well. And lots of amazing guests. So definitely check in. And Tuesdays, we have Tuesday Tech Talk. If any of you guys have questions about video or photo editing or YouTube. Cryptic Cowboy says we need uh, need some paranormal. Yeah, we had uh, Panic D on the other week, and it was we had a storm that night. I believe uh, Xenia believes I don't believe, and the same with them. He believes his wife doesn't, so she's a biologist. And we got talking that night. And we had a bad storm, so it wasn't clickbait. But we're talking, and I just literally said the the only place where I ever felt something that I could say paranormal, not paranormal, but just that inner feeling was the time that I visited Auschwitz. And no more did I say Auschwitz. All the power went out in the house. So really great uh, clickbait. And we had yeah. geeks as well about paranormal, but we would love to have someone else uh, as, well. as well. That's right. Yeah. Uh, w.V. Mochar definitely would be great. And uh, Ram Jams, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, sure. Definitely. Uh, the best way to connect with us if you have anybody in your mind that uh, would love to be on our show or, yourself. or if it is yourself exactly you can go on our twitter and uh, send us a, or a message or tweet at us uh, and we're gonna get in touch with you and set up a date um uh, let me drop the link to our twitter and also guys you can find all of our social media Thank links you. In all of our videos, they're always in the description and the pinned comment. Uh, question, please, for Pusha Studios. Do you believe in UFOs? I do. I believe the possibilities out there. I don't believe what anybody's seen yet is a UFO. Because uh, our shirts from Panic D that they sent us were so cool. Because like I said, the wife doesn't believe, the husband believes. They sent us the shirts and it says, uh, I believe under it. And for mine, it says, I want to believe. So... And that pretty much summed it up. Yeah, I do. I do uh, definitely can talk about it a lot. Food uh, fighters, yeah, sure. Yeah. If you can connect us, I'm Get glad they won. On. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, by the way, Sticky Buzz was saying earlier that if if he would be on live on any streams, he he would choose us. Well, yeah, anytime. Anytime. Like I told you, you don't have to show your face. I would actually, as much as I'd love to see you, I know why you don't want to show your face, and I get it completely. I love the idea of you doing it with the two with the the the, the, the with the eyes onto it. Thank you, Mariska. I will check that out. Uh, thank you. Yeah, follow us on, on Twitter. And if you want to be on the show, uh, just send us a message or, or tweet at us if you can send it right away. Uh, and uh, we'll check it out. Definitely. We love we love having different channels about different subjects. That's what we that's what we do. Yep. Uh, we try to get more personal uh, with people behind the channels and. Uh, uh, a variety of people from all over the world. As I was saying before, we had people from New Zealand, we had people from South America, from Europe. <laughs> uh, so that's well, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a huge Van Halen fan, a junkie Van Halen fan since way back. Uh, uh, that's the first concert Xenia ever got to see was when I took her in Montreal to see, well, first big, big yep. mass produced concert. That's right. <clears throat> I used to work for a music company, so I used to go a lot backstage in that. And since I don't work there anymore, I'm too cheap to buy tickets. So, except for Van Halen, you got to see Van Halen. Yeah, I would like to see Pink. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> That's when I go back to being cheap. <laughs> She was on, she was here like two months ago, so maybe next year. Uh, okay. Um, uh, oh, cryptic! You have been on a live talking about your UFO experience. I would like to know about it. Can you send a link or put a link? I'd like to see it. Uh, sticky buds, yeah. If you can, that would be cool with the avatar. But I'm telling you, you could do the shadow thing with the. Oh, hood. that would be awesome too. By the way, mm. yeah, because it actually reads uh, facial expressions. He says, I just wish I knew how to make it, though. He's going to make his avatar do it. Oh, there is a program. You can do it online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have done, we have fooled around with it with, uh, with Chris before. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hazy Days, for coming. It was such a pleasure having you tonight. Thank you once again for your generosity, not only with your time, but for the last minute notice and that. You're a real champ. We really do appreciate it. Yes, best friend in your thread, you missed hazy days. Yeah, really that's what walked. happens <laughs> when we walk around other places. <laughs> uh, just joking. It's Stephanie. Um, uh, thank you, T-Strog, and thank you, everybody. Uh, both channels came across the headphones great. Oh, that's that's oh. perfect. Thank you. Uh, so we'll, we'll use my computer till we solve out uh, yeah. the issue on the other side. I'm going to be solving it soon. We're not staying like this. And have a good night, teeth, Rogue. <laughs> this has been the worst feeling sitting here tonight. I, oh, my God. John Fogarty and ZZ Top in two weeks for Panic Day. Oh, nice. Oh, nice venue. Yeah. Uh, that, that would be. Uh, I caught ZZ Top in Austin years ago when I was a truck driver. And I was down with a girl at the time I was dating. And it was such an amazing show to catch them there really blew me away that's why when they came to montreal i never bothered to spend the money i'm like what you know see them in austin nothing's gonna make it feel that good so anybody you want me to take to pink concert <laughs> Lowe's, Lowe's gruel, thank you so much for coming it was really nice having you here and I hope you can make, find your way back. Love having you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, his man cave was amazing. I would love to have that. Uh, you know, that uh, there was this, I think it was a UK, this uh, fashion thing going on, uh, or trend thing, that uh, women were making these sheds in the garden and uh, decorating them and calling them uh, girl sheds. Okay. And basically, literally, a, a, a size of a shed, and it was in the garden, but, uh, like, it's, like a main cave, but for women. There you go. Yeah, I was on trend. <laughs> Mark, Hi, Stephanie. I've seen you before. <laughs> Mark Horn, thank you so much for coming. And yeah, we'll definitely love to have you back. Such a pleasure. You take care of yourself. Really do appreciate you coming tonight. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, you guys are amazing. Uh, Hazy Days, your supporters are really amazing. I love to have uh, everybody together. That's uh, so great. Isn't David Hasselhoff huge in only two parts, Germany and Quebec? <laughs> God, with Quebec, anything's possible. It wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> the Gibbons, interesting guys. Oh, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Interesting. Stephanie Opel is also a really awesome when she's live. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little plug in. Uh, Mariska, uh, I'm so worried about mispronouncing. Mariska Van Ber, uh, Bundren, Bundren from Amsterdam. This was a brilliant gathering. I'm sorry if I butchered it. I tried my best. But uh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And like I say, I hope you can come back and see us again as well. Uh, like we say, we do it six nights a week. Uh, Tuesdays, by the way, is uh, the only night we don't have guests. We do uh, Tech Talk Tuesday. And that's when we just all sit together and brainstorm for people that are doing like questions about shooting, uh, editing, uh, different types of editing programs, plugins for YouTube, things uh, to grow the channel. Oh, thank you. I, I was because I was nervous about that. I didn't want to do your name. And Xenia goes through this all the time because it's spelled K S E N I J A. So uh, we're used to people not getting names right. So even our own channel name. 
who should because it's Latvian and like I said early in the cast it's a town where Xenia's mom grew up as she passed away so we named it our business after her it's kind of a tribute but it's uh people even have trouble with that today like uh it's always uh they're always wondering uh, Pusha and Pusa and... Yeah, I mean, basically pronounce it like P-U-S-H-A. Yeah. That would be the right pronunciation. Um, thank you, Philip. You're so sweet. I don't know what you guys are waiting for. Like, uh, this is the best part, apparently. <laughs> uh, hmm, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and uh, Cher is doing a video about uh, meeting the rock stars. So that's amazing. Looking forward to that. Uh, Cher. Oh. Yeah. Uh, about uh, Alice Cooper and Cheryl Crow, Led Zeppelin, and so on. Nice. Uh, so that's cool. And the cryptic is smoking tobacco. No, no, it's nothing like First July coming up. Yeah. Oh, Mariska. Ah, oh, Mariska. Oh, very. Van nice. Benderen. Bunderen. Bunderen, yeah. Mariska. Are you in Amsterdam? Mariska Van Bunderen. Are you in Amsterdam, by the way? I'm going to call you Red Baroness. <laughs> That's what he's going to call the Mariska. I'll be saying it both ways in my Q&A. So you can hear it on the Aussie accent. Excellent. Love you guys Aussie can't accent. say anything wrong. That's what you guys get, a, like, a free pass. On I love Aussie there. accent. Yeah. Uh, the, the actor that played the mentalist, he has a very sweet uh, Aussie accent. <laughs> Skip the last name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Mariska Amsterdam. Miss Pusha so hot. Oh, you're so That's sweet, right. honey. You you weren't here at the beginning. I was telling you that I was sleeping all day today. I have my flare up of my uh, CFS. So I you're too sweet. I'm so puffed up today that it's not even um, funny. But you're you're yeah. <laughs> you're very sweet, Stefan, as always. I meant to say that because uh, uh, Sticky Buds when we were talking about accents, that was what I was. We were talking to Donny the Donny Show, Donny Shaw Show. And I was saying, you know, when I was in England, I had, I was catching myself doing it. And I even called my sister. And I'm like, you wouldn't last five minutes here because I'm doing this awful accent all the time. Even walking down the street, not talking to anybody. And her, she does it all the time. So I'm like, you'd be offending people left, right, and center. And then Donnie thankfully put my mind at ease when he said he does it all the time whenever he goes to a different county or so area. But like in Australia, I would be, I would not want to be. But I'd be terrified of becoming like this obnoxious, like, and it's always when somebody does another person's accent, it's always the most horrible version of it. It's so cartoonish and over the top, like nobody else speaks like that around there. But yeah, I would. Australia's on my bucket list, so is New Zealand. But that would be my worst fear. Like even like my, like when I do the English one, it's all it's never the the suave, you know. Prince Philby, it's always somebody who just like got in a fight at like a football or <laughs> football game, I guess. Oh, well, you're still looking him up? Of course. <laughs> okay, so for those of you who don't know who uh, Mentalist is, uh, for Simon uh, Baker that played Mentalist, he's from Australia. I just wanted to show you if you don't remember who is it. This guy here. As like there, he looks like such a Australian guy, but um, oh, he looks like an Australian. Yeah, he a, has a really nice Aussie accent. <laughs> Sticky, but yeah, I can lose my accent so easily. I got drunk one night and was telling Irish jokes all night and had the accent stuck for three days after. Uh. <laughs> Oh, Panic D, by the way, was suggesting you put your Speedos on and get in a pool. Uh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Stephanie says you are cool, too, by the way. <laughs> I, I I think she only said that just because she's, you know, complimenting me and just so you don't feel bad. <laughs> thank you, Stephanie. And uh, <laughs> thank you. Yes, we're very chill out. Uh, mm. Mr. and Miss Dis Dis Ms. Demeanor, he's mm. calling us from the Alice Cooper song. I got to ask Sticky Buds. How many times, because I'm sure you ran into tourists around there, did they use the accent on you? And they always use the same phrase. It's either something from Crocodile Dundee or, uh, has a dengue ate your baby? And so, like, I'm assuming that's probably one of the two that you hear like 99% of the time, and they think they're wowing you like you've never heard it before. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, look, uh, Mariska is named after uh, the singer in the I'm Your Venus uh, song, you know? Oh, really? So, yeah. Oh. Oh. That's interesting. From Bananarama. Or, or no, the original one. Yeah. The original one. Right, 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 right. <laughs> LOL. Yeah, I get that a bit. That's what I figured. I, I assumed that was pretty much the way. Like, I remember when Crocodile Dundee came out and North America went to this Aussie craze and it was for all the wrong reasons with a country that has so many amazing things into it. And all it was was like outback steakhouses and like, uh, that's not a knife. This is a knife. Blah, 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 blah. Everywhere you went. Then it turned into that's not a car. This is a car. And this is not a food processor. This is a food processor. Mariska, you uh, you are uh, just a year older than me. <laughs> Probably the same age since, since my birthday is in January. Even all my classmates were in 1983. Um, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, guys, what you're expecting there. The panic D and Philip was all getting excited and cryptic <laughs> uh, about something. I'm older. Won't. I'm older. Woo. <laughs> when is your birthday? What month? Going to call it tonight. Oh, December first. Oh, you're just. Are you disappointed, Panic D, that Andrew didn't put speedos on? Ram a banana. Yeah, yeah. I know. We used to say that too about that band. December first. That's what you oh. asked. That's what you asked every guy that you wanted to get on their last nerve, and that if they're into ram a banana. So we're almost the same age because mine is 15th of January. So we're right on there. That's what I figured. I remember the Beach Culver's too cryptic cowboy where I was actually showing my son that the other day. My oldest son. We were talking about Canadian programming back when it was a gem. No adult swim. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> oh, the Runaways producer uh, produced one of your bands, Stephanie. Oh, that's cool. Wow. That's cool. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Philip Beachcomber is awesome. Yeah, except when I showed it to my 20 year old, he didn't. He was kind of a hard sell. I drive, but that show went worldwide. I mean, I th- I think we looked it up. It was showing what 140 countries or something like that. Hello. Yeah, Cryptic's mm-hmm. friend, Cryptic's dad's friend, wrote the script for Littlest Hobo. Sorry, I'm reading all the revelations here. What you were saying? Nothing. <laughs> My dad. Excellent. Really. Lilith's Hobo, I showed him too. And that was, uh, you see, they brought it, they did a tribute to it in the Trailer Park Boys one night when Ricky's sitting in his car. When he ends up back in his car, he's got the TV on the hood watching it. Ah! What? I don't know. There was an awful sound. Like, oh, that's a bug of some sort. Something was flying. Oh, God. <laughs> no, back in another bat. It's not a bat. Well, how do you know? Jesus, if it was a bat here, you would know it. You didn't know that the last time there was a bat? Pro is sitting somewhere now. This one's fun. Well, that was quite a bug. Kind of like a helicopter. Now I won't be able to sleep now. Okay, we're back. Oh, it was really loud. Oh. Susie, welcome back. Uh, yes, we're still here. We uh, Everybody's waiting for something here. I don't know what. Uh, we don't know what. <laughs> that bottle caps right on cue. <laughs> of course. Not another bat. I, I can't do anything because I've got no damn computer to do it on. And she's got the computer. That's why it sucks tonight for Adult Swim. <laughs> Don't blame me. Or do you want to come sit here? So now I'm doing that for bottle caps. I'm giving them fuel. The Runaways movie fits the way it went about John Jett, Terry, 
Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I'm more flexible, I'll tell you. Huh. <laughs> I get a kick out of you. I like your style. Cherry pie, cherry pie. Like I said, I got no controls tonight, so. Yes, you did, Cryptico. <laughs> Oh, you had a little nap. I just woke up in time for Susie. Welcome back. He has alarm for Susie. Yeah. Do you want to come here, honey? No, it's it's just all wrong tonight. Like, there's just nothing right about this whole scenario. Let me tell you, when this stream is over, I'll be doing some sleuthing to figure out what happened so this doesn't happen again. Oh, well, funny. we can just put, put you here. Yeah. It's just well, it's, you can have controls on. I don't even, your computer, I don't even know what half anything is. And I just we'll fix it. Uh, we'll get that all straightened out. <laughs> Doodles, my dog. Thank you. Well, it was something I don't know what sounded like a helicopter. Like, oh, shit, that's funny. It was so loud, and I could hear it like scratch, a scratch against the wall. But when it was flying or whatever. So if it was a bug, it maybe June bug. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. That's why oh. I didn't want to say it, but. E Those are awful. Mm. I'm definitely not sleeping here tonight. Back in the 90s during Lindros' rookie year, went to old Montreal Forum to see the game. Montreal is a very cool, is very cold in February. Yep, that it is. We are the city of extremes. It's the minus 40 Celsius in the winter and the plus 40 Celsius in the summer. And even higher than that sometimes. You probably got rats in the world. No, no, no. <laughs> the, the, it's a brick. No rats there. And uh, <laughs> Helicopters. <today. laughs> Go to bed and there is not a helicopter in your house. Yeah. Thanks a lot, bottle caps. Now I'm going to have to thanks. No, there are no rats. It's not a wood house. There's nothing. Uh, yeah, there's no no place for that here. Cryptic Cowboy, sir, you've told me before I got a horrible memory. Where exactly are you out of again? Mariska thinks we're hallucinating. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Throw a thong at it. You call them flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. No, no, it wasn't a rat. It was up here. It was up in a corner. I don't think rats are flying unless there's a new breed or something. Ontario, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but like, uh, like I know you don't need to give Close your exact location. Uh, no, but like on the eastern, eastern Ontario or western Ontario. And uh, cryptic. By the way, we we mm. did a photo uh, for the event uh, <laughs> uh, for the event in an old forum. Mm -hmm. uh, it was quite cool. It was last uh, last fall. The last concert I ever seen in the old forum. Oh, you're in the same town as Avril Lavigne. Oh, so you're on that side of the. Okay, because yeah, I was wondering. I figured so because you said about. Uh, you said about. Uh, Napan five, sorry, five, you hit it. Nap I can't pronounce that town. Napani, Napani, Napani. Napani. Yeah. On the water. Ooh. No, it didn't bite me, no, but it's still. Oh. So is this the best part or what, Philip? No, you guys want the, the, the naughty uh, Pictionary? Is that what you're asking about? You live you, in. You guys want to play naughty pic? Uh, naughty. Look what you got me saying, Jesus. Naughty. <laughs> I don't know. What did I do? We just got to come up with some. We're starting to run out of stuff. <laughs> but you don't know any naughty things anymore. I can't believe that. Saying naughty, that's all God Almighty. Adult Swim Pictionary. Is that guys what you were asking about? Oh. I'm scrap. Yeah, well, exactly. Welcome back, Mr. Depressing. How are you? I, I hope not depressing at the moment. Okay, well, okay, we do random times, uh, for those of you who don't know, random times we do uh, adult swim. That means that when we go past 10, it starts to get pretty ranchy sometimes. And and very on random occasions, we sometimes do adult swim pictionary, meaning that either the drawing itself or the uh, answer to the drawing is a little bit on the naughty side. 
Um, so 18 plus. We also keep tracks on the points. And uh, at the end of the month, we're gonna crown the winner with a pacifier and the therapy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you have to have the most uh, points in the month. And since this is random, it's quite, uh, you know, you have to either be here all the time or be very lucky to hit this random occasion. Oh. Okay. Hey, Millie, how are you? Millie and Ashley are both one. Okay, take three. You have, what, 15 minutes? Or what time are you going to? <coughs> yeah, about that. Take three. Not a Pictionary. Well, Cryptic, I'm glad you enjoy it. We enjoy having you here, so. You're falling off the couch, yes. Uh, okay, are you ready? Do you want to, the thing? I, I opened it here. So there okay, you go, the controls are with you. This sucks, well, you gotta open up the uh, print. Yeah, I did. Oh, okay. And you're sharing it? No, I just opened it. You have controls now. Oh. This feels so awkward for so many reasons, but okay. Uh, I'll have to have a phone open, or, or you have it for answers, yeah. So I'll get yours. So I can see the answer. This is so awkward. Yes. Yeah, okay, so, are you guys ready? I know yours, I don't like yours, yours sucks. How is it different? It just has more options, <laughs> and I am not, as sad as that is to say about Microsoft Paint, mind you. But we'll start off with something really easy here. Uh, okay, everybody's ready. Millie and Ashley's in. Welcome. Brains on check. Control her. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You have been good to me since we met from land there, uh, see Canada. Yeah, they're great. They're amazing. 70 likes. Wow. Thank you, guys. Three, two, one, ready. Everybody's ready. Doc, penis. Earth below us, drifting, falling. Steph, are, are, are you writing the song right now? Dog, duck. This is naughty Pictionary, guys. Naughty. Adult swim, doggy style. Dog. Horse. How is horse naughty? <laughs> really short thumb. Doodles. <laughs> <laughs> cat, cat dog. I'm trying to find a way to do this drawing with it. Horn dog. Ah. Bat. Bestiality from bottle caps, of course. Bull, devil dog, jackalope. Marisk is dying there. It's a good, it's a goddamn bull. It's a goddamn <laughs> bull, Mr. McRae. It's a bull. Deer, horny dog. Uh, they count horny. We'll give it to him. Sticky buds. Sticky buds gets it horny. Although he said horny dog. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Oh, then they said, oh, yeah, that was a hard because, okay. Because I couldn't look at it like I usually do. So. Well, you can't look and draw at the same time. So who gets the point now there? Well, I, I'm not going to take it away. We're going to give it to Sticky Buds, but we're also going to give it to uh, Susie because she said it right after the full word horny. So. Okay. Okay. So Sticky Buds get one. Point. <laughs> not the same as horny dog. I knew it's going to do. Well, that's what I thought too, but yeah. Susie gets one point. Okay. Okay, well, Flip Epic. Epic, you take care of yourself. Well, you're in the lead right now. If you're going to bail out, I don't know what's going to happen. You might miss on your pacifier. So. <sighs> okay. Rosorian, how are you? Uh, where is the delete button here? Just go file new. It was the same as the. the no. <laughs> no. Don't have to worry about saving it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, okay. I was in the middle of both those hands. Yeah, because you actually even spelt it perfectly right. And I know I have. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's well, get back in the game there. Uh, so, Millie, another yeah. point, too. 
Yeah, Millie gets the point. points to everybody, the same as he was wrenches. So it's pro point. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, control Z, you tap it twice and he rates everything. He's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you guys Saint ready? Enterprise Hello, Sane. We are just a naughty fictionary adult swim. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're going to use my, this of is my course. cheat sheet. Okay. All right, guys, here we go. Three, two, one, and we're off. You got to watch the chat. You're very well. You're very welcome, Millie. <laughs> That's right. Drum roll, Mariska. Mountain Moose. <laughs> Mountain. Remember, guys, she calls it naughty. It's supposed to be uh, <laughs> raunchy. <laughs> um, the horny snowman. <laughs> oh, Mariska picked one here. Ear stuck? <laughs> yeah, sticky buds. Camel toe. Wow, good one. Sticky Buds uh, is in the lead with two points today. <laughs> Incredible. Good job. Oh. All righty. Okay. You can open the chat there. All right. If we move this there and open the chat and decide you're going to be able to see it. Okay. Just one side. I don't know what you're drawing, so I'll just keep uh, reading it. Okay. Okay, next one. Oh, uh, this is going to be hard. Still looks like a mountain moose to me. Hmm. Cryptic says, just saying. <laughs> you're not pouting. Okay. Sasquatch. I like <laughs> that one. We've gotten 69 likes for adult fictionary. Well, we had an amazing guest before this. We had a hazy days on, a musician from UK. Uh, this is just our Friday night, uh, late night pastime for a little bit. Uh, Easter Island, <laughs> vagina, barf, Mariska. <laughs> My grandma. <laughs> That's from River River and Pogolos. Screamer. Oh, you're still here. Good job. Orgasm. Clitoris. Aztec porn. Barf. SM. SM for everybody. Oh, God. I really want. I shouldn't have did this part. That's going to be. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> hey, kid, it's Mr. Rogers. Obby Scott, hello, hello. Welcome. Red light. This game sucks. Bottle caps, <laughs> of course. Oral sex district. Oh, okay. Red light district. Yeah, courthouse. Insert here. What? <laughs> Is that a robot? Red light district. Box. Red light district. Get the hell out of the house. <laughs> Hello, Abby. I can't even write on this to make it fair for them. That's why. Oral the house. <laughs> There should be another word here, Me but too. so it's fair for you guys. That Vulgar. word should be side, but there's not enough room, so I'll, I'll write it here. Me too. Me three. Me four. <laughs> Mariska. Me five. Are you exploding on the sixth one? Marriage counselor. counselor. That's a good guess, by the way. Head job, blow job. There you go. 
Which one? Susie. Head job? Blow job. Blow job. Okay. <laughs> Susie, good. Whenever it comes to filth, we can always count on Susie to crack it wide open. <laughs> Okay, uh, Susie. Sex in jail. Jesus. Yeah, sticky butts this time because she wrote it the exact way. Sorry, but I, I know that was kind of a toss up. Okay. <coughs> Susie had two points on our first one, so she's uh, she's getting in the good points there, too. Yesterday, Patsy won, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Yeah, go figure that one. Eh? Okay. <laughs> For any of you who don't know, Patsy Houlihan's a puppet that uh, visits us now and then. You know, look at Sticky Bud, such a good. Uh... <laughs> oh, Bob Caps. Oh, yeah, let's see. Stupid comment. Okay. He doesn't know naughty words. That's why. That surprises me. Like, I thought this would be like, of all the people in here, actually, I thought this one would be more tailor made to you. Like, that surprises me, I gotta say. <laughs> oh. And we're off, guys. Here we go. Again, terrible drawing. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> It's still better than my drawing. Sticky butt says you're you're too kind. Rose. Roseberry. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Bottle cap, you can call me a lot of things. Don't call me a Frenchman. I'm not a Frenchman. Never was, never will be. Glasses, boobs, testicles, peeping Tom. <laughs> Nerd sex. Glass sex. Friday stick. <laughs> Nutsack, ovaries, bra. I guess you don't think too much of us, Andrew. <laughs> oh, I think a lot of you. Philip, I always think a lot of you. How could you ever even question that? <laughs> I'm just not a Frenchman. Nipples connected. Oh, God, Grandma's bikini. <laughs> That's a good one. 69 and then 96. <laughs> Susie's finger stuck in a cherry pie bottle cap throat. <laughs> Erasing. <laughs> That's a good one. Jesus. Foot fetish. 70s porn star knees. Handcuffs. Yes! That's how I roll. There you go. Toe jam. What the hell is that? Toe jam between your toes. The oh, the yeah? yeah? Never heard of it. Okay. That's how I roll. One point. That's how I roll. Okay. Mariska, you are a lot on that S and M. Every time we draw something, it's S and M. Doesn't have to be S and M to have handcuffs, guys. That still looks like a mountain most to me. <laughs> okay, guys, somebody's gonna get this one fast. This is an easy one. My God, he doesn't have much girth. Whips and chains. Okay, next one. Watching. Yeah.
We could. Oh my god, I didn't think we'd get rid of all of it. Damn it. I thought it just got Dildo. Rid of it. I'm stopping this time before I start the other part. Penis mushrooms friend group. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's Jesus. Impregnating. And Philip fell in love to in Mariska right now. Oh, there you go. We're making new bonds all the time here. I love Roaster, king of the cup. I thought Rooster is, is the one, not the roaster. <laughs> Blue Ranch Boo Balls. Mm. Penis Rooster. Hawk ring. Yep. Good job. That's how I roll. Man, Two you're points. on fire. You're on fire. I think you're in the lead. <laughs> I like how the look keeps putting cock rim. I was there, and I wish it had been there that night. It was the perfect one that, that nobody got it. Okay, so Sticky Buds has two points, and that's how I roll is two points. And the rest, uh, Susie Millie. Uh, oh, no, Susie has two more points, too. Sorry about that. Susie. Okay. Could the Cowboys ask me if he won? No, the moose didn't want. <laughs> Those are hands. <laughs> uh, I don't know how lag the chat is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, god. Okay. Oh my goodness. Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are not behind. <laughs> We're laughing at someone else or a cryptic color that just checking. I got three organic points in Violet Bird stream. Okay. I don't know what or <laughs> I don't understand the organic for since we're doing adults with or, bottle or, caps, uh, we're a combination uh, organic points doesn't sound too oh. well. <laughs> yes, phone sex, my goodness. Holy shit, that Club was fast. Up, animal cruising, Mariska, my goodness. Phone sex is the answer. Your drum sex. <laughs> I, I I gotta flub in an epic. I gotta write him in here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I didn't. I heard you. Yeah. Flub in epic one. Good. Alrighty. Can you click this down so I can see that? Oh. Okay. Thank you. you okay. Okay. All right. You weren't using Google. Well, I don't know how you can Google these, but that's okay. <laughs> wow, caps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Violet is awesome. Yeah. Okay. No, it's the next one. We have a couple more minutes here before we finish it up for today. Is it allowed? Well, it's not naked, so it's no, not. Uh, Resorian. Uh -oh. It's not naked, and it's uh, interpretable, so. Well, this one's kind of a bit on the nose, but. Helmet head. Dick head, cock ring, helmet head, dick potato. <laughs> a big cock that bends like a hook. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> that funny? oh, Jesus. <laughs> Talk, tick, tick, tater. Uh, what a dick. Mr. Dick Potato Head. Semen. <sighs> potato sex. Choose one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there, Flub and Epic, you wrote it. That's right, Dictator. Congratulations. Okay, Flub Oh, Bottle Caps, you just missed uh, it by a second. Yeah. Some in. sticky buns. <laughs> oh my God, <goodness>, chlamydia. 
Flubbin Epic, two points. So Sticky Bud, Susie, and Flubbin Epic, oh. and that's how roll, two points. Who is going to get the three points today? And poor trip to Kelvin like you see Mountain Moose and all this stuff. I don't know what you're smoking there, honey. Um, oh, now, Bottle Cast brought up something interesting. He's saying he got it because he spelt it properly, which we did say a while ago. Okay, I'll give him a point. Yeah. Just because of his bottle caps. Goodness. No drama. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> what the mouse on? No. This one is easier without it. <laughs> yeah, I know cryptic. I'm starting to worry too. I think there was a common theme at first. <laughs> Uh, clitorius, small penis, snail penis, excuse me. <coughs> Cryptic Jesus. A weird clitorius. <laughs> Screwing. <laughs> Jeez. Fuck sticky buttons. <laughs> Circle jerk. <laughs> Thank you, bottle caps. Always nice to hear that. <laughs> bottle caps, you're something else. The start of the Twilight Zone, Crypto Cowboy Road. Wood, Susie Road. Open pit mine. <laughs> Circle jerks. Oh, good man. I was just. <laughs> Sorry, I was in the middle of drinking my coffee when I read that a while ago. Oh my god. Sorry about that. Birth canal, Jesus. Oh my god, you guys are amazing. Hypnosis sex. Growing penis, I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> Potato head, I thought. <laughs> Smoke. Yes, yeah, bottle caps. Another cigarette. Honestly, that one was a coffee one. Not that cigarettes don't make it any better. Oh my god. Guys, I'm kind of interested in the fallopian tube. <laughs> Flower of the feeling of... <laughs> Sphincter. Texas Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage. I love you guys. It's abstract uh, thinking there. Butt plug. All good answers, by the way. All good answers, because I'm just as curious as you guys are on this one. <laughs> you really see that mountain moose, eh? This is turning into a bit of a... I rolled up dick. Crypt Cryptic is still sticking with the moose. It actually looks like a vagina the moment after a baby slid out. Oh, God. Oh, God. Cabbage head. <laughs> Snail trail. You mentioned my last colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, cabbage head. A little throw to the kids in the hall. I like it. Anal something. <laughs> the newest condom. What in the hell is this? Well, I said uh, that uh, either the answer or the drawing is naughty. Anal sex. Ribbed so condom. it seems to me that the drawing is naughty. Circumcision. And not the answer. It's amazing muscle do they snap back. <laughs> but not as good as New Year. <laughs> Cam. That's a good. That, okay, <laughs> that's the right way of thinking, but no. Oh, God, now I'm really terrified. To see <laughs> the eye of the tiger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know. Like an old acid trip or something. Oh my god, Riska writes rape. Awful. <laughs> Boombox 80s style, Clitorius. 
and hermaphrodite <laughs> meat curtains god guys i'm no further ahead i'm almost terrified it does look like an old <laughs> zena flower before it opens what is zena flower i don't know river ben longbow is picked it i'm curious i'm actually just quickly i'm going to i'm going because it's not my interest this close very close rose yes thank you gosh guys you're so naughty look at all your answers before well no what the hell was this? it's a rose it doesn't look like a rose to you well yeah kind of but i don't get the point well because it looks naughty but it's not there you go guys are right. yeah hemorrhoid there that, see that's our role that's where i was kind of go with it man I said either the drawing or the answer. I even told you guys before that. Okay, Mariska, one point. Thank you, girl, Mariska. Now we know how dirty mine is. <laughs> it kind of looks, podcast kind of looks like a Russian bomb shelter. And yes, R River Band, you were you were on the right path. Uh, very good thinking. Okay, point. On the contrary, Andrew's gonna draw a cock again, and we'll see where <laughs> this comes out. Of. The go. depth of my despair. <laughs> Looks like a Russian bomb shelter. Yeah. Riverbend, I'm going to give you half a point just for thinking that it's a flower before everybody else. Because, uh, yeah, exactly. That's. What kind of build did you take? <laughs> <laughs> Who asked that? Ah, flubbing ethics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I took some codeine with some uh, other stuff in it. So. Yeah. Uh, okay, jockstrap, thong, jockstrap, string. Yeah, magnolias are very sexy flowers, by the way. I should have thought of magnolia. Yeah. Um, pod piece, chastity belt. You drew something similar yesterday. It has uh, had um, lines going through it. No, again, a terrible drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It is. I would be the first to say it. Isn't that the joy of Pictionary? Is the worst of the the artist? And I use artist in the loosest sense of the term here. Leather S and M bull punishment. Gag ball, kidding, jock strap, G string, road to Tipperary. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, where there, by the way? Jock strap, no. BDSM, what's the word? Um, well, if, if you, if they guess it, I know what you mean. If they guess it and you were correct, then we'll give you half a point. Yeah, Mariska can't find the uh, English word for it. Domination. Wet dream, Andy hose. Yep. Andy hose. Love an epic. Got it. Where is this a panty hose? Panties. Hose. I was drawing the fire hydrant. Oh, you're drawing it in two parts. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, Panty hose. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Did you want to finish? No, no, it's drawing? all good. It's all good. Okay. Uh, Flubbin Epic gets three points. Okay. <laughs> the cowboy give me a hint so I can get one point. I get it because I spelled it correctly. He says <laughs> bottle caps. Who is that now? Bottle caps. Uh, how is it not correctly again? Any host. There's not supposed to be a space between. Oh them. my goodness, bottle caps. Is that what Violet has to deal with? <laughs> uh, okay, half a point for you. Goodness. Gracious. I, I admire his tenacity on the whole thing, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and Riverbend, I, I promise, the half point for Flower. You all, I guess, want that pacifier and therapy <laughs> session. Okay. Okay, well, how many? Two more? 
I write the first picture and then the second. <laughs> no, I point. gave you the point. <laughs> Goodness. You get half for first and half for the other one. Ex I'm Ex I'm drawing now. Xenia's drawing now. <laughs> Nothing is there, Stephanie. <laughs> Pulp fiction. <laughs> uh, okay. No. Now I'm gonna think of something. Um Oh. Okay, now don't not, and you're deciding because I know you you'll sit there for an hour you'll forget that everybody's even there some of these are way the hell out there though. Like crazy Bunny. <laughs> Flatline. Are you D? <laughs> Cow. Almost. Okay, speed guessing. Outer keeps coming up. <laughs> yes, Griff, take care. It's the moose. <laughs> Breastfeeding, doggy style, milking the cow. Milking. Riding the heifer. So, yes, cowgirl. <laughs> there you go. Cryptic cowboy gets a point. You made it, my friend. Oh, horny. <laughs> Yeah, could you put the uh, chat back? Oh, yeah. Yes, you won, Cryptic. It? Um, so it wasn't the cow, it was a pig. Well, I'm sorry. Why? It has hooves, too. Yeah. It doesn't have the, uh, how is it called in English? The milk uh, sack. Udders. Yeah, like that. Looked like it though. That was what I was thinking it was too. Well, Let's... yeah, but it has hooves. Doesn't have as long as a tail. Tail and and uh, milk sack is different for piggies in Europe. <laughs> Just like the voice, the, the the what the things that animals say there. Stephanie's still going masturbating on a bull. <laughs> Well, what about the characteristics? Yes, short le uh, neck or or long neck. That's not the, you know, the main feature. But yes, I will try my be best next time to drawing a cow. Oh God, I gotta start. That looks. I, this is so awkward doing it from this side. Taurus. Love stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Eating pussy with a long neck. Isn't she beautiful? A runaway bride. Is she? Cleavage, Joker.
Is that cryptic going to be? He just came back from. Mm -hmm. Quit bitching, Andrew. Just go buy a new laptop tomorrow at Staples. The, no. <laughs> Staples wouldn't be the place. Who wrote that one? Ball cap, of course. I don't buy them at Staples. I go to real computer stores and get real ones. That's why I have an MSI. Nope. Pearl necklace. Yep. There you go. Sticky buds. Sticky buds. Sticky buds. Sticky buds. Yeah, we know. We love his intro so much. I like, sticky buds. Sticky buds. Every time I see him, I get that song in my head. Mariska Phillip is in love with you. Uh, Sticky, <laughs> Sticky Buds gets the point as well. Uh, so, stick. You know how I wrote you in my notes? Stick. Uh, so, Sticky Buds, three. Sticky Buds has three points, and Flubbing Epic has three points today. Uh, are we still going? Oh, we'll do one more. Do you want to do the last one? I don't have anything thought of. Okay. Okay. Then let's shut it down. We'll we'll just talk for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's it for the uh, Adult I'm Swim stopped. Fiction or anything. I can't do it so fast. God. I'm getting that fixed right after this. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Bye. Hi. We're back. <coughs> uh, so uh, today, today, who won? Who won? Club and Epic got three points, and Sticky Buds got three points. Oh, we so, had a tie. Yeah. Nice. But uh, Sticky Buds, you got to catch up because Club and Epic uh, got three points in the first one as well. So he's in the lead right now to getting the uh, pacifier. So, and therapy. And therapy, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. Thank you guys for sticking, uh, sticking yes. out. Yes. On? Sticking with us. Sticking with us. I don't know what she's talking about, guys. Uh, thank you so mm. much. Uh, I was really. Um... Is anybody is anybody here going to be streaming up? Pantera. Pantera, yes. Mm -hmm. I like Pantera. Yes, we we got that, Philip. We mm -hmm. got that. I think there is something there. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, exactly. I feel sparks. And yes, Crypto, you got a point. You did it. And without the moose. Yes, exactly. Uh, stick around and see what uh, <laughs> who wins at the end of the month. So. I'm sticking with you because I'm made of glue. I like that. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> oh, Philip. Uh, um... You guys are too much. I love it. And like I say, tomorrow night we have another great guest. So I hope you guys can join us at 8 p.m. Eastern. Anybody new here? Anybody returning? Definitely love having you guys here. It's been a great time. It's been lots of fun. I'll flip an epic. See, Mariska is a good girl. Uh... <laughs> You all are very naughty, love it. <laughs> Flubbin' Epic, thank you. I still feel like crap, but thank you. It's the Pell, the Pell. <laughs> uh, we should have one point of words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll figure something out. Uh, I have negative six points. You take care of yourself, Susie. Thank you, Susie. Thank you so much Hope for you coming. had some laughs and enjoyed your mm. Friday with us a little bit. Mm. You know, we joke and, you know, things we had a bit of trouble tonight, but who is a great guest this time? Um, I'm sorry. We're, we've had a long day, guys. And we have a, like, we're human, too. we got a lot of stuff going on in real life as well. And, you know, the live stream literally is 30 to 40 hours a week. It's uh, when you put everything together, the time on, the bookings. Like today we had a cancellation from the AB Grill. It wasn't his fault. He got his house. No, the other way around. Age, age, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Jade sorry. Uh, eats. Yes. And then, yeah. Yeah. Eight, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it was all just kind of was one of those days, and we had to find somebody at the last minute, and we go on, literally had to go on a live stream and get somebody, and it really worked out. We had a great guest. You guys got to meet some new people as well. Uh, it is a lot of work. We do put our best into it. And like I said, Casey Days was so awesome, though. Yeah, uh, no, it was amazing. Especially for the today. time difference. Yeah, exactly. A last minute and time different. That was great. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three types of people mm -hmm. in the world those who can count and those who can't. Oh, my God. Uh, Night Doodles. You take care of yourself. Give a hug doodle. to Susie. Yeah. 
<laughs> you probably will. I hope you two don't get too inspired by this naughty Pictionary. And I hope you will. <laughs> uh, so tomorrow answering that great question, because obviously there was no sarc sarcasm in that question, mm -hmm. well caps. Uh, tomorrow uh, is going to be my Japanese lifestyle UK. Yeah. Uh, so another guy from UK, and but he's really cool uh, guy. He is exploring all Japanese culture while he's in UK. Yeah, all the food and culture and traditions, and uh, it's it's really interesting channel. And I'm really looking forward <laughs> to seeing him tomorrow. He's very excited to be on as well, so we can't wait. I oh uh, Stephanie Opal. I, uh, oh, I was not expecting this. Yes, explain. No, we went. St <laughs> I think Stephanie. <laughs> Like that was the Susie channel. Oh no, <laughs> no, no. Uh, Susie, uh, Susie and Doug are actually married in life. So uh, we were sorry, hmm. we were saying to Doug to go and give a hug to Susie hmm. in the late, real life. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. We were so horny. You should interview Patrick Roy. Oh. He would definitely be up for it. Yeah, yeah. Just get him yeah. over here. A night sticky buds. Yeah, we just like laugh. I think like doing the hor uh, horny adult mm -hmm. swim dictionary just brings us to our childhood, you know, when everybody was stupidly laughing about every yeah, little exactly. drawing and, and, and things like that. So it's just more just to have a relax. <laughs> oh, okay, good night. Sleeping uh, by myself off. Better go play guitar. <laughs> I'll fly over the firefly, remember, to the treehouse. <laughs> Exo. Yeah. Um, it has been fun, guys. Thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for joining us. And, uh, yep, tomorrow night we'll be back at 8 p.m. So thank you very much, guys. Good we're morning. really down to earth, like, pro -grow mix is the type of weed you're talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. You so fingers, Mariska. You should do heads up where the chat gives you clues and you have to guess. Oh, okay, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I love heads up. Sure. Oh, that's that's something. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Sweet Moses. <laughs> Train those fingers. <laughs> I had to read back. Now I get you. <laughs> Oh, Friday uh, night, guys. Well, enjoy uh, your Friday night. Uh, yep. I think Mariska is already at 5 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Yes, it's at 5.30, so it's hard to do a booty call at 5.30 in the morning. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> a step said, oh, look at that. And Mar Mariska got magic fingers. I love that. Oh, there you go, girls. Yeah, uh, get those guys <laughs> in their imagination, and we'll leave you guys at it. So, night, night. <laughs> Take care, guys. Have a great night. Love you all. Cheers. Keep creating. See you tomorrow. Bye now.